My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. The village that we have once again to gather together, to look upon you and to contemplate your essence. Father, even as we behold, we trust that we will be changed according to your word. And every one of us here will gain strength to become true witnesses and saviors in this dark world. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. You may be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. We want to look at the subject of the rise of saviors. There is a necessity for urgency. Our world is plunging into darkness. But unfortunately, many are not aware. You see, the scriptures opened up declaring who God is without introducing him. The Bible said, in the beginning, God. It's a sign that for life to count, for you to have meaning in time, your reference must be traced to the one that sits on the throne eternal. That is why the scriptures opens up by declaring his reality. He didn't bother introducing him because everything that is created or that is going to create eventually will draw reference from him. That means breath on your nostrils will be a waste unless you have known his dimensions and you have begun to interact with him. If you have not known him or interacted with him, everything you do in time is a waste. Biologically, it may be called life, but when you are judged from the realms of spirit reality, you didn't live in time. Because the only thing that gives time value is the fact that it was what? Retraced to the one who is called God. And when we begin to contemplate the subject like the one we want to look at tonight, there are three dimensions of God that we will definitely have to understand and interact with. Meanwhile, there are multifaceted dimensions to his reality. The first time he was introduced, he was called the Elohim. And the word Elohim simply refers to his almightiness. Essentially, Elohim means the plurality of unity. So God is revealed as a mystical reality. He is three, but he exists in one. So plurality, having the ability to exist in perfect unity and oneness was the first dimension of God that was revealed. So every time you contemplate him, you will know that you are coming in contact with one who is a mystery. And beyond that, this dimension of God that was captured in the name Elohim also revealed the fact that he is almighty. And that is why as Elohim, he created the universe. There are many other dimensions of God that are captured in his reality. Those ones do not pertain to creation. Because those ones will not necessarily have to do with might. There is a dimension of, of God that deals with judgment. That one will have no part to play with creation. The one that has anything at all to do with creation is the one that has to do with his almightiness. When you want to look at matters of sin and judgment, God will no longer be introduced as Elohim. He will be introduced as Jehovah. If you want to look at matters of provision, he will no longer be introduced as Jehovah. He will be introduced as El Shaddai. That means everything you call reality in time has its reference and foundation in God. So if you want to begin to judge the value of your life correctly, you must understand the dimensions of God that has to do particularly with you. Because you can just relate with him as God, an invincible essence and being that is in the spirit realm. And you will not know that his existence has a direct implication of, on your existence. So you will afford to live your life as you please. You will afford to live your life carelessly. You have not understood time. You have not understood life. And you have not understood meaning. Everything that plays out in time has 
has a different dimension of God that impacts on it directly. Creation has Elohim impacting on it directly. Righteousness has Jehovah impacting on it directly. Provision has El Shaddai impacting on it directly. Covering and protection has Nisi, Jehovah Nisi impacting on it directly. So your life is not existence unless there is a dimension of God directly impacting on you. You may live here for 90 years and when you depart from time, then you will appear in heaven. They will tell you you didn't believe on earth. Because there is no dimension of God that can be traced to you. There is no dimension of God that your life gave expression to. The reason Jesus was relevant is that when he came into the world, the Bible said God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet, has in this last day spoken unto us by his son, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. Jesus was able to represent all of the dimensions of God in bodily form. That is why there is none that existed like him. And that is why the life of Jesus became the most significant life that ever walked through time. Because it was in Jesus that the fullness of the Godhead was expressed in bodily form. For you to count in time, there is a dimension of God that must be heavy upon your everyday decision making process. There is a dimension of God that must be heavy on your thought pattern. There is a dimension of God that must be heavy on your lifestyle. And if you don't know these three dimensions I want to reveal tonight, by the help of the Holy Spirit, you cannot be a savior in time. It's going to be possible for you to exist as a human being. But in heaven, you will not be numbered as one of the saviors. You know, the Bible said in Obadiah chapter 1 verse 21, it says, saviors shall arise from Mount Zion. It's not everybody in Mount Zion that we arise. It is saviors that we arise from Mount Zion. But the people that will be called saviors, there is a dimension of God that they have seen. You know, Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Have you read that scripture in Luke 18 verse 1? You know what that scripture means? It doesn't mean you should pray. What it means is that if you are not praying, you are not a man. <laughs> he said what? Men ought. So if you are a man, one of the ways that heaven recognizes that you are a man on earth is that what? You are raising incense. So, but eventually you are not praying and your incense does not appear in heaven. You are not a man. You can be an amoeba. Biology can call you a man, but according to the scales of the divine, you are not a man. You know, when an immortal personality begins to utter his voice, it's important for you to wait carefully and to contemplate his ways, to understand the depth from where he's talking from. See, this is why you persuade a lot of people to pray. They don't understand that their meaning and cardinal essence is defined by the things that Jesus utters. He said, men ought always to pray. So if you are not praying here, you may be called any other thing, but heaven may not call you man. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Meanwhile, you are living by the philosophies of your grandfathers. You are living by the philosophies of holy wood and holy wood. The way your dress code, your talk, everything was informed by Nollywood. But Jesus said, if you are a man, what are you supposed to feed on? Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, that is when you are qualified to eat bread. So if you are eating bread alone, it's possible that you are not a man. There are three dimensions of God that you must know if you will walk through time and be relevant. One is God as father. Two is God as king. Three is God as judge. If you don't know him as father, you will live a life of lack and penury. If you don't know him as king, you will live a life of lawlessness. If you don't know him as king, you will live a life without government. And if you don't know him as judge, you will not be relevant in eternity. Because everything in time will be reckoned in eternity. See, these three dimensions of God, you will interact with him differently. When God is interacting with you as father, it will look as if there is no law that governs creation. Don't be deceived. You can come to father every morning and ask for bread. He will give you bread. You can come to father a thousand times. You will sin. You will be forgiven. You can come to father as a prodigal son. While you are yet coming, he will run to embrace you. It's one dimension out of many. By the time king appears, 
They will judge you based on the ranking system of heaven. The father can collect the prodigal son. But when the king meets the prodigal son, he will tell him the heir. So long as he's a child, different nothing from the servant, though he be lord of all. Therefore, he places him under tutors and governors until the time appointed. Listen, if you don't know God in different dimensions, you will waste your life. You have been taught prosperity and life from the position of receiving from God. Go and check Hebrews chapter 11 in the hall of fame. You will discover nobody was rated because of what he received from God. Everybody was rated because of what he did for God. That God they were interacting with is not father. That God they were interacting with is not king. That God is a judge. So he ranked them based on the quality of service they rendered in the kingdom. Because the judge is not unjust to forget your labor of love. The judge told Abraham, he said your children will be in captivity for 400 years. He said, but I will raise for them a deliverer. 400 years passed, he was not moved. Because there is a credential that the deliverer must have. And if there is nobody with that credential, they will be in captivity for 1 million years. And he will not be moved. Because that is a judge. He walks by righteousness. He walks by judgment. He walks by equity. He took Moses extra 30 years to qualify as a deliverer. That was when the judge rose. Most of us only know God as Father. That's why we can afford to sin every day and come back and say sorry. When eternity appears, you will not see Father. You will see a white robe. Tonight, I want to show you God the Father, God the King, and God the Judge. If you can see him, then you will become. You know, the Bible said, it does not yet appear what we shall be like. He said, but when we shall see him, we shall be like him. I want to show you something that will make you know that you don't have the luxury of sin, even though there is forgiveness. I want to show you something tonight to let you know that you don't even have the luxury of irresponsibility, even though it's your life, as you say it. I want to let you know that life does not end in time. God is Father. God is King. God is Judge. God created the man Adam and he put him in the garden. In the garden of Eden, everything the man wanted and could imagine, God provided it. In fact, when God finished creation, it was God that contemplated and said, you know, after he created Adam, he went and sat down and he was thinking what is it that this man will ever want or can ever need or will ever require that have not yet been provided and when the divine pressed on for a long time he now concluded and said it is not good for the man to be alone he created Eden the word Eden means the, an open heaven a place where you have access into the presence Eden is a place where man was given the benevolence of walking in and out of the presence of God meanwhile the presence of God is the most prized commodity in the whole of the universe he had it in abundance and God planted a garden in Eden and he put the man in the garden everything the man ever would require for life he provided it because the one I was interacting with him was father the word father is the word fundus fundus means foundation that means your stability in life is not in yourself when you see somebody struggling in the flesh trying to succeed, he has not known the father. The word father in Hebrew means fundus. That means he is your foundation. He is your confidence. He is your absolute assurance. In the Greek, the word father means is pater. And pater means sustainer and nourisher. So he appeared to Adam as father. He provided Eden. Everything he needed was in Eden. God didn't stop there. Every day as he came into the garden in the cool of the day to interact with Adam, he was trying to check, is there anything this guy will need? Is there anything this guy will lack? Is there anything this guy will want? And when he discovered, he said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make for him a suitable helper. So God went again, casted a deep sleep on the man, removed his sleep and created Eve for the man. That is father. The father is always restless until every need of the child is provided because if the child has a legitimate need that is not yet provided then god has denied himself as father the reason god will not rest every time you ask 
he will give to you is because his father if he refuses to give to you he has denied himself he said ask of me ask of me ask of me many times in scripture ask you shall receive seek you will find knock the door will be open that's the father in john 16 24 he said until now you have asked for nothing ask that you may receive that your joy may be complete that is father talking but unfortunately some people only knew him as father so adam woke up in the morning everything he needed was surrounding him he woke up from sleep and suddenly he saw eve he said this is the bone of my bone the flesh of my flesh and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man one thing you will not see in that scripture is that on the strength of fatherhood god allowed him access into the archive of heaven so adam could open the vault of heaven and look upon secret things that god did for himself the bible said the secret things belong yet unto god but the things that are revealed they belong to us and to our children forever but adam had access into secret things because when god sat down contemplating the creation of eve he never consulted adam but when adam woke up he knew that the name was woman the same name god called him the same way in genesis 2 19 he went into the garden and every name that god gave all the animals before the foundations of the world adam was calling them because he had access into the registers of heaven that is father benevolence but he only knew father he didn't know that when god told him of all the fruit is in the garden you may eat of them freely but the fruit that is in the middle of the garden which is the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil you will not eat it the day you eat it you will die he thought the one talking to him was father he didn't know that was george that's why the holy ghost comes to you he said wake up fast you woke up you wanted to eat you felt bad but after 30 minutes you say oh boy oh boy is the living that serve the lord and then you go and eat your conscience trouble you after five minutes you kill your conscience what you don't know is that it is your future you are eating because the judge cannot deny himself the day of your showing forth will be elongated Abraham woke up he said what this is the bone of my bone the guy could enter into heaven at will while he was in Eden he will open the registers of heaven he can look at you in Eden and say Kai, you will be born in the year 2000 he knows it because you were penned down in the chronicles of heaven Adam could look into the past, into the future. He had access into such dimension because he was dealing with what? With father. But he didn't know that God was not only father, God was judge. So when the devil came, swiftly the devil mingled his way in and began to ask questions. You know, at Eden, Adam had more information than Lucifer. Adam had access to more depths than Satan. You know, Satan was operating at such level of privilege when he was in heaven. The Bible called him the anointed cherub that moved to and fro in the midst of the coals of fire. So he had access. He walked in close proximity to God. The angels that walk in the midst of the coals of fire are the seraphims. And the reason is because they do business with holiness. So every time as they walk in the coals of fire, they are purified. That was why when God gave Isaiah the privilege to come to the heights of the heavens in order to gain stature in the prophetic ministry, he appeared before the coast of fire and he said, I am a man of unclean lips. That's a prophet. On earth is a prophet, but when he entered heaven, he was what? A man of unclean lips because he saw the coast of fire. One of the seraphims had to touch his tongue with the coast of fire. That was the game that Lucifer was involved in when he was in heaven. The Bible said you are the anointed cherub that covered it. That means he was both a seraphim and a cherubim. While he was in heaven, he had access to information. But now he's falling. When he was falling, he didn't have access to revelation and insight into the realm of God anymore. So he had to come and inquire from Eve. Did God say you should not eat of the, all the fruit that are in the garden? The guy is falling. And the reason he fell was because himself didn't know God as judge. He was walking with God, playing in heaven. He thought it was all about fun. When he violated the laws of righteousness, the judge appeared. He said, Oh, Lucifer, how are thou fallen? You thought in your heart. You thought the judge was able to traffic into his heart. He didn't even utter it with his mouth. 
But where he was walking was in the midst of the coals of fire. That's a ground of blazing holiness. You have no right to think iniquity. So when he taught him, he said, God picked it and said, Oh, how art thou fallen? So the guy fell from wisdom. He fell from revelation. He fell from access. Adam was walking now in the height where Lucifer fell from. But he didn't know that Lucifer fell because he didn't know God as George. So when God said, Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he collected from his wife and ate. And him too, what happened? He was falling. The man that was walking in so much wisdom now went and gathered leaves to cover his nakedness. The leaves that you put in the morning and will dry in the afternoon. For the first time, God corrected Adam. Before that time, God never corrected him. Everything he did was 100%. Every animal that Adam named, God came and said, That is the name thereof. But now Adam covered himself with fig leaf. God came and said, No. God killed an animal and used the skin to cover him. He was falling. But because his father is not enough, God went ahead and was looking at how he will redeem this man. Meanwhile, the man was not knowledgeable enough to come back to God. He went his own way and his offspring began to create civilizations apart from God. He had no insight to come back to the Lord. But because God is father, it was God that still came to him. That's the heart of father. You saw that when the prodigal son was coming, it was the father that ran and hugged him and embraced him and gave him a ring and kissed him. If you only know God as father, you'll be set up in time. You will bargain your eternity in time. That was what happened to Judas Iscariot. Jesus said, you will sit with me on 12 thrones to join the 12 tribes of Israel. Judas sold his own throne for 30 pieces of silver. A throne in eternity, he bargained it in time for 30 pieces of silver. Most of you, what you call pleasure, you are bargaining your destiny. That's what you don't know. That time you decided to fornicate. And you thought you would come back and ask their God, I'm sorry. What you didn't know is that you were supposed to be one of the three prophetess that God will raise in your generation. But what you have done is that you have made your soul to become numb. So what you should pray for one hour to have, now you will need to pray for five hours. Because you have exposed iniquity to your soul. So your soul can no longer ascend to the realm where it will naturally ascend to. But unfortunately, in your lifetime, you may never pray for five hours. So even though God will want to help you, he can't. This one, we call it brotherly talk. I'm not ministry yet. It's brotherly talk. I'm just drawing your attention to something. Adam fell. So God came to the garden as usual to relate with Adam. And they couldn't see Adam in the radar of heaven all of a sudden. So God came and said, Adam, Adam, where are thou? Where are you, Adam? God can't find Adam. Meanwhile, Adam was still in the garden. But what he didn't know is that he was not only in the garden, he had a throne in the spirit realm. So it was that throne he had in the spirit realm God was relating with. But what they were doing in the garden was in the natural. Their intimacy was in the spirit. All of a sudden, God couldn't find Adam. Adam was in the garden. God was looking for him. He was falling. But the heart of the father will not let God rest. So for many generations, God was looking for how to save this man. The father wanted to save the man, but the judge cannot bend the laws of righteousness. So it's impossible for the man to be saved. God sent many prophets. It couldn't work. No wisdom could suffice. The only thing that could suffice was for God himself to take upon himself the likeness of a man so that he can rescue man. Such level of love has never been seen. It's just like the same, but in the mosquito kingdom, a mosqui the mosquitoes are doomed for destruction. Then you now will have to become a mosquito to go into the mosquito kingdom and save them. And when you became a mosquito, then mosquitoes teamed up against you. Mosquito, <laughs> See, they will deal with you. They will deal. <laughs> a mosquito, no, no, please. As big as this, my brother is now. Then mosquitoes now gather, say they will kill you. You know the problem now is that. You know who you were as a man. And you know that based on who you are, 
1,000 mosquitoes. All you need to do is to do like this. All of them will die. Now, suddenly, you lose all your ability. You become as weak as a mosquito. And then mosquitoes can actually kill you. Can you imagine what it looks like? Or maybe you become a pig in order to save the pig kingdom. You know that naturally, the stench from where pigs stay alone, you can't even stand it. But now you are compared, you need to take your bath in the mud. You can't help it because now you have the nature of pig. While you are in the mud, because you are hot, and the only way you can get some, some ventilation is to go into the mud. While you are in the mud, you still know in your head that this is not what you do naturally. But you have to endure the mud all your, for 30 years. You are roaming in the mud. And then now you are hungry, you want to eat. And then you scroll past the house, you see them cooking. You know this is what you should eat on. But now you eat on decayed substances. Because according to the nature of pig, that's what you have to eat. But your brain tells you that this is not food. But you still endured it. Such was the kind of humiliation that God subjected himself to. In order to reach out to man, it's called the heart of a father. Because in a falling state, the man became useless. The man became condemned. The man fell from the class of God where he was created. So God had to condescend to the level of the man to bring him up. And he went that far because he had the heart of the Father. And now that he has saved you, he now gives you the assignment to save your world. So the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 17, it said, whoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. That person is no longer a man. He is now a God kind of man. He is a new creation. He said, all things, the falling realities are passed away. He said, but behold, that man needs to become aware that all things have become new. This is why we preach the gospel. To let you know that you are no longer the fallen man. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, John writing to the believers, he said, these things have I written to you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you now have eternal life. Men, they don't know they have eternal life. So even though they have been brought back to the class of God, they are still living like fallen creatures. Every time you indulge in sin is a lower level of life. Every time you indulge in the ways of the world is a lower level of life. The Father has done his best by bringing Jesus. The only way you can gain value now is to accept what Jesus has done and live accordingly. But many believers are still living in the world, even though they have been saved. This is what God did when he wrought salvation in Egypt. He raised Moses for 40 years, sent Moses by many signs and wonders. Moses saved the Israelites from Egypt, carrying them to the promised land, but their heart was still Egypt. They wanted to return to Egypt. Every time you go back to the world, what you are doing is that you are disdaining the sacrifice of Jesus. You may not even understand what you are doing. And if you disdain the sacrifice of Jesus, the judge will show up. Because everything Jesus did was what? The expression of the heart of the Father. Now that Jesus has done everything to express the heart of the Father, your response is what will determine your relationship with the judge. This is why it is what you do with what you are given by grace that will determine who you will be in eternity. Because the judge will no longer judge you because of your fallen nature. He will now judge you with what you did with grace. Because your fallen nature, every vengeance of God has been, have been poured on Jesus on the cross. Now that Jesus has given you his own life, what do you do with it? This is where Christianity ceases from being a religion. Many of us think it's about coming to church. So we dress well to come to church. We dance, we sing, we cry. It's beyond it. One of the reasons we were saved is so that we can save others. So he said God was in Christ. 1 Corinthians 5.18 Reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses against them, but he has given them the world of reconciliation. That is where saviors come from. The moment you are justified, you are given the license to bring salvation to others. 
But the question is, we call ourselves Christians and believers. Most of us have been in this camp for 12, 13 or 14 days, but your life has not impacted anybody. That means you don't know the reason for salvation. So the father will look upon you and say, is this one aware why he saved? Every day all of us go out is about who has the best polo, who has the best shop maker. We, we, we form with our canvas and our socks. You will live here after some years, you will not remember what this camp looks like. You will not even remember. But everything you did in this camp for God will rise like an eternal memorial. For eternity, it will be a statement in heaven. I served in 2012. When we were going to the camp, we wanted to kill ourselves. We snapped all the pictures put online. The first two days in camp, the moment you wear your 7 over 7, everybody must see it on Facebook. Now you will even, I don't remember whether those things are still on Facebook. But the things you did in camp in the name of the Lord, even if you forget it, there will be a testament in heaven. The same way the blood of Abel cried from the ground. The Father has demonstrated the highest law by giving Jesus for you. Now he wants you to become reasonable by living your life for Jesus. If you only know the Father, you will live always asking God for bread and for wine. This is where many Christians are and that is why the kingdom is not advancing. Everybody who is an Islamic person on this campus, they don't violate the time of their prayer. They don't need to be NCCF or Catholic or whatever. When the time of prayer comes, everybody leaves everything they are doing. Even if it's in the sun, the same crested vest you wear and all you are doing is pictures for Facebook. They will kneel down in the heat of the sun and they are worshipping. Because they understand kingdom. We don't understand kingdom. The Bible said in Obadiah 121, it says, Savior shall arise from Mount Zion. First, to judge the mountains of Esau. Secondly, that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our God. So, when you are justified, the Bible said he gives unto you the ministry of reconciliation. Why? To judge. The word judge there is not the word to condemn. The word judge is to show them the way of life. The word judge there is to reveal to them the standard of living. So when they look at you, they should know what life is about. But unfortunately, you look more like the world than they who are in the world. The Bible said concerning Jesus, Philip came to him and said, show us the Father that we might see him. Jesus said, you mean you've been with me and you are asking me to show you the Father. He said, whoever has seen me, have seen the father that is a kingdom agent your life must be lived such that everybody that interacts with you has seen jesus if you talk is jesus they hear paul said in first corinthians 11 1 he said be ye followers of me even as i am the follower of christ so paul may never mention jesus but if you interact with paul you will know that his life is not the life of a mortal man there is a spirit living through him and not too long stay with Paul, you will receive Jesus. Stories were told of Mahatma Gandhi. He said he met the Christians, but the Christians did not look like their Jesus. So he can't be a Christian. He believed in everything Jesus said and stood for, but the believers did not look like Jesus. So he refused being a believer. Not because of Jesus, but because of the believers. And if Mahatma Gandhi was convinced by the Christians he met, India today would have been a hub of Christianity. The population of India today is almost 2 billion. India alone is bigger than Africa combined with South America. There are about 1.9 billion Christians in the world. No, 2.4 billion Christians in the world. Only India is 2 billion. China is 2.6 billion. Imagine if the two or three Christians Mahatma Gandhi met were able to show them Jesus. The work of India today would have already been achieved. So every time you meet the unbeliever, you don't even know who you are meeting. Some men are nations. Some of the men you are interacting with, they are nations. So God is sending nations to you. If you convict that man, you have won a nation to Jesus. Some of the men you meet are families. If you convict that man, you have won a family. Some of the men you meet are systems. They are companies. They are institutions. 
if you win that man, you have won an institution. You may not be aware. I was told that when Billy Graham gave his heart to Christ, he was the only person. But when Billy Graham died, Wikipedia recorded that he won more than 43 million people to Christ. So the person that won Billy Graham won 43 million people with him. This is the intelligence of kingdom that many are not aware. So we live for ourselves. And these matters are matters that have eternal implications. We can come to church and be emotional. I am a revivalist. I know what to say for the whole to scatter in five minutes. But many times, when I meet young people, I want to ask you a question. What is your life reflecting? Every day you go to church, what is your life reflecting? That's the one God will ask you of. I know you are a good singer. I know you are a good preacher. I know you are a good talker. I know you are an organizer. But what is your life reflecting? You are not aware that you have been committed the gospel of reconciliation. It's a ministry that the Lord has given to every one of us. But very few are maximizing it. We live for some is for gear. We, we relax our... There's nothing wrong with excellence. But that's where the God of some people is. Their God is their beard. Some people, their God is their leg. That clothes must reach here. And then they wear high heels. They want everybody to see their leg. If you have not seen their leg, they will go home and clap. That tailor has not done her job unless the 10 people see them and say, Wow! Ah! At that time, you have, you, they, they, have, you have, they have been worshipped. When you come and say, Wow, your hair is so beautiful. You have made their day. No wonder Jesus says some have received their reward in time. Some have received their reward in time. Some people, their prayer enterprise is to gain the applause of people so that they'll say, Oh boy, this guy in a prayer. They don't say he's a man of prayer, they say he's prayer. Ah, when you call him prayer, pray you, pray you. <laughs> but the question is. What is happening to your environment and the people around you? How much of God have they become? That's what the judge is looking out for. Every time he flashes his light from heaven, he is checking the degree to which your life is impacting the people that he's sending to you. Those people coming to you and admiring you, you think they are your friends. They are not your friends. They are people God sent to you. Jesus prayed in John chapter 17. He said, no one you have given to me is lost except the son of perdition that the scriptures might be fulfilled so jesus knew that everybody coming to him whichever way they are coming they were people god sent to them to him so he had a personal assignment to reveal god to them the people coming to you you call them friends when saul was looking for his father's missing assets he met samuel and samuel knew that he was a king why the day before god told him the man that comes to you by this time tomorrow anoint him as king as far as Samuel was concerned, he had no business with Saul unless Saul became a king. That's when his own assignment is fulfilled. Some of the harlots that come to you, the club addicts, the liars that come to you, do you know why God sent them to you? You don't understand the business of the kingdom. When you know God as father, then you migrate to the next level. It's good to know God as father because that's why you have confidence to ask him for everything you will need. And in this life, you will need many things. I assure you, you will need many things, legitimate things to advance the kingdom, including money. And you will need to ask the father for it and he will give you. But when you have known him as father, you need to migrate to know him as king. When you know him as king, everything he gives to you is for advancing his kingdom. That's why Nicodemus came to Jesus. Jesus told him, except a man be born again. That means a man will have to accept the provisions of God. Then he will come into the kingdom. So the reason a man is born again is not just to receive what God has to offer. He said when a man is born again, he begins to perceive the kingdom. It's another layer of growth. He needs to see God as father. Except a man is born again, he cannot receive the kingdom. That means when a man sees the father, he must have to see the king. That's what Jesus was telling him. So the disciples that were with Jesus, Jesus didn't tell them about born again. Jesus told them, the day they caught the revelation from the father he said thou art petros upon this petra i will build my ecclesia so when you have come into the kingdom god wants to build with you the revelations you receive the gifts that you have the access
tests that you have, they become tools in the hands of God. For Peter, he picked a revelation from heaven. And God said, on this revelation, I will build my ecclesia. And what was the first thing? He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When you know the father, the father supplies. When you know the king, you defend the kingdom with him. You become a tool in the hand of God. The gates of hell. This place you came to, you call this a camp. You don't know the princes in darkness that are here. There is a law of immorality in this ground. Many virgins who came here, they will either be disflowered on this camp. You will ask yourself, where are the hotels? <laughs> you have not been on ground for long. Ask those on ground, they will tell you. If they are not disflowered here, two weeks after camp, I assure you, many will be disflowered. Why? They came to a territory of a prince in darkness. They are not aware. They are not aware that this world has been fabricated and divided to princes in darkness. Where you call your house, where you call your village, there is a, a warlord in darkness that lay claim on that land. So every time you come into a territory, if you have known the king, then you become a, a battle axe. At this time now, your life is beyond you. You are fighting for the kingdom. This is why NCCF is here. This is why you are bringing people to come here. It's not because you have money to spend. You have understood that this place is a nursery. The same way the devil is recruiting, God is recruiting. Because this is where kingdom agents are built from. It's a ground of training. The devil comes to select his manpower. God is also here to select his manpower. You may come to this ground, your gift will become your cause. If you don't know kingdom, you came here as a beautiful person. You thought beauty is a gift. If you don't know God, beauty will become your undoing. The reason why your attention, your, you will become popular in the realm of the spirit. And all the spirits will want you is because they now saw that, ah, because you are beautiful. All the boys are attracted to you, so they put their searchlight on you. At that time, your beauty has become a cause. Because they see that if they get you, they can get 30 boys. The devil doesn't waste resources. He came, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you, to sift you like meat. He said, but I have prayed that your faith faileth not. When thou art recovered, strengthen thy brethren. Why did the devil go for Peter? If Peter fall, all the disciples will fall. He went for, for Judas. Judas fell, nobody noticed. He came for Peter. If Peter falls, everybody falls. So Jesus said, when thou art recovered, strengthen thy brethren. There are some of there are some ladies here that if they fall, nobody will notice. But there are certain ladies here that if they fall, they can drag 30% of all the boys that came to this place. And I assure you, if they get 10 boys, seven will be prophets. You know why? The prophetic guys, their antenna is sharper. <laughs> you know, the people don't understand the intelligence in darkness. When things happen around them, they think it's normal. They think it's coincidence. There are no coincidences in life. Everything is carefully orchestrated from the realm of the spirit. This is why my temptation is different from your temptation. You may be handsome. The devil comes on you with a such light of immoral power. Because he knows that you can bring down 20 girls in a day. I might go for 30 girls. Only one will accept me. Meanwhile, you, you are there. 30 girls are calling you. The devil will not waste immoral power on me. He will use it with you because you are a more profitable agent. It's the politics of the realm. So Jesus said, upon this gift, upon this revelation, upon this strategy, I will build my church. That's the same way the devil builds his church. The word church is ecclesia. It means representation. It means a witness that bears the burden of the king. The same way we represent God as a system. The devil have men that represent him as a system. So when we come here, we need to be aware that we are in a ground of warfare. Most of you that are here, if you don't wake up, this camp will define the philosophy of your life. Some of the things that may happen to you here, you will never undo it again for a lifetime. So the first thing God will do to you is that he will open your understanding. So that we understand the scriptures. You will know the voice of God. Because you have come out from among the people. God wants to deal with you and interact with you now as an individual. Suddenly, you will notice that you begin to receive whispers in your heart. And God used many ways to bring men into truth. Some people, he will use light. 
the scriptures will open up to you. So you just know, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. So I cannot think evil. You have heard that scripture before, but now God has quickened it. And because it is quickened, you can no longer think evil. I have the mind of Christ. For somebody, for somebody else, God will tell him, fast for 21 days on this camp. It's the same thing he wants to achieve, but different routes. For somebody else, he will tell him, run three, three hours prayer schedule every evening. There are many people with strange instructions currently going on in this camp. You are the only one that wake up in the morning and you are jog jog jogging to the feet because you think it's about March past. You think it's about Platon. That's the least activity here. The activity of the spirit here is ten times more than the one you are doing in the field. What you are doing in the field is the least activity. If you wake up in the morning and see the demons paraded waiting for you to come to the field, you will shout. You will shout. Some bombarding you in your sleep. Before you go to the field, they have positioned the guy where you will stand, where you will stand. You went to the camp, the market, before coming to the camp. You saw one white cardigan. You now thought this cardigan is fine. <laughs> you don't know the priests that have manipulated things. Have man they have set up a time bomb in camp waiting for you to come. But when we become wise, we know that upon this rock I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Paul said in Ephesians 4 27, he said, Giving no place to the devil. Have you given place to the devil already while you are in camp? It's time to shut the door. Because your destiny is at stake. And it's not just your destiny. The destiny of many, many more people. Most of you, before you came for camping, you started having encounters and visions. Because oftentimes, when God wants to raise saviors, he begins to give them encounters, visions. Some of you began to have knowings. You will be great. You will be great. You will be great. You just think that something will soon change around your life. That's heaven bringing you invitation. It was the same thing God did for Joseph. The young man woke up all of a sudden. Genesis 37 verse 5. And he had a dream. He said he saw him and his brothers gathering sheaves. And suddenly his own stood straight. And all of his brothers sheaves bowed down to his. And the brothers said, what do you mean? You mean we are going to serve you? And they began to plot to kill him. But he only had a dream. Because he is a savior. The first definition of a savior are the encounters that he has. Encounters begin to come to you. It was Moses that went to the backside of the wilderness in Horeb and suddenly he saw a bush burning that was not consumed. When you begin to have such encounters, know that your season has come. But when your season comes, also know that demons will rise against you from Hades. Demons will rise. Demons will rise. As if it was not enough, he went back, slept, and came back the next day again. And he saw another dream. This time, 12 stars. And the sun and the moon came to bow to him. And because he told his brothers they rebuked him, he now went to tell his father. The father now rebuked him the more. You mean me and your mother and your brothers will bow to you? I didn't show myself this vision. It was shown to me. Yes, that's why the devil will rise. Because the devil knows that the reason God is showing you vision is because heaven is already arranging the politics in your favor. So they will fight to make sure you don't enter. It was on the strength of that vision that the brothers hated him. And when the father sent him to check out on them, they said they will sell him. They wanted to kill him. Their heart didn't let them, so they sold him out. Why was he Potiphar that he ended up with? Everything he called a trial was a pathway of progress. Most of you, after you have your encounters and trials begin to come, don't resist it. They will post you to a place you don't like. After you did all the politics, you were even working in the computer room, so you wanted to post yourself to Asso Rock. <laughs> Asso Rock, Asso Rock. When you now finish, they, put, they may now posted you to... Uh, where, where is it? Kujen. You, oh, Abaji. They posted you to Abaji. You now say it's a lie. I will not. Calm down. God is sending you to the school of the spirit. You did all the manipulation. You said no matter what, I'll be minister of finance. I studied economics. When you now finish, they posted you to a primary school in Dutsi Alaji. <laughs> you want that? Why did I come to Abuja? I said, I've even studied in Nasarawa State. This is where your ground of training is. When Moses saw his vision, he attracted persecution. When Joseph saw his vision, it attracted persecution. He went to Potiphar's house. 
From Potiphar's house, he went to prison. You will think that his own has finished. He was there for 14 years. But he knew that what was happening, the hand of God was involved. So when Potiphar's wife wanted him to sleep with him, he said, how can I do this evil against God? The guy knew that God was mindful of him. So what he went through was not a challenge. He knew it was a journey of progress. And from prison, the day of his showing forth came. That day he was prepared. May you not be taken unawares in the day of your manifestation. Because you violated process. The greatest things you will learn are not in the classroom. They are in the field of trials. It is in the womb of trials that the biggest lessons of life are learned. That's why God said you will walk through the waters. You will not be drowned. He didn't say I will save you. He said you will walk through the fire. You will not be born. That time you are not dealing with a father. You are dealing with a king. So he's allowing you to be exposed to the laws of righteousness. It was when Joseph was to be released that we knew that it was God manipulating his destiny. The Bible said he sent a man before them. Psalm 105 verse 17. Is that how you send men? So you want to send me, you will send me to prison. It is an intelligence of the king. He knows what to do to you for the laws of righteousness to strengthen you. Some of you will be in the palace. Some of you will be in the wilderness. Whichever pathway God chooses for you, don't fight it. He sent a man before them. Even Joseph, whom they sold for the servant. He said his feet was bound with fetters until the time that his word came. He said the word of the Lord tried him. After he was tried and he was proven faithful, he said the king sent for him, even the ruler of the people. Suddenly his ranking changed. He made him, made him ruler of his house and lord of his substance to teach his senators wisdom and to bind his princes at his pleasure. How can a prisoner learn how to teach senators wisdom? When he was going through that pathway, the king was showing him how to navigate in the corridors of authority. You will not know authority until God carry you through wilderness and the ground of slavery. That time you can now feel the heart of people. That's when you become a wise man. When his brothers came, they were fidgeting in Genesis 45 from verse 5 to 12. He told them not to worry. He said, God sent me ahead so that I can preserve you. He knew that the reason God sent him ahead was to preserve the covenant of Abraham. It was him that would preserve Israel, not Israel preserving him. How did he gain such wisdom? He had interacted with the God of faithfulness. While he was in the pit where there is no water, God became his water. While he walked through the darkness, God became his light because the king was teaching him. There's a syllabus the king will use to teach you. That's when your pride will crack. If you only walk through the ground of stardom, everybody hailing you, you will say, I'm a humble man because you came to collect the microphone, you did like this. You are a joker. What you don't know is that your action is the least is the least part of you that has volume in the spirit realm. Your thought is louder than your voice. You collected the mic, you did like this. <laughs> they are laughing. When God wants to chisel your pride, he will carry you through trials. Some of them will attract so much disgrace that even when you want to use your pride, you will look for it, you won't find it. Arrogant, you think it's about beauty. Meanwhile, the person God wants to marry, wants you to marry. As beautiful as you are, it's your arrogance that will make you not end up there. And God will stop at nothing until you marry this person because there is a destiny that only two of you can bring to pass. So God will break it. And most times he uses circumstances. Terrible circumstances that nobody can save you from. You will call your uncle suddenly. Ah, I knew a friend. When we were serving those days, far back as 2012. They were waiting for this guy to pass out. There was a position waiting for him for, in Arik Airline. The guy is a big boy. These are the type of people that they don't even, when they pay Alawi, they say, okay, they don't pay. All right, all right. They, they never touch his Alawi. He gra when you pass out, say, if you don't know, I'm waiting. You know, there are two sets of people that intimidate people in, in NYC. The first set are doctors. <laughs> Hospital management board pays them huge amount of money. That's one. Secondly, why they are serving? When you want to do any test, they will tell you to go to a particular lab. It's a lie. There's nothing special about that lab. They have an arrangement with the lab scientists. Every I start with them. Every Saturday, the lab scientists will bring 30% of everybody they refer. So they never touch the Alawi. 
They never even touch the money from hospital management board. That money they make from referring people to labs is enough to sustain them. So when they are leaving NYC, they are big boys. The second set of people are sons and daughters of politicians. They want to oppress you and show you they have something. This boy was in one of those categories. Two weeks to passing out his father died. The Bible says, Woe unto the man that put his trust in the arm of flesh. He has not seen the king. He doesn't know the manipulation in the realm of the spirit. He doesn't know how princes in darkness can turn the tide against a man. So he didn't learn the way of prayer. He didn't learn the way of intercession. He didn't learn the way of giving. Two weeks he was waiting to resume in Arik. The father died. All of a sudden, all his uncles stopped picking his calls. His father's friend that will send him money unannounced in camp. Now he's calling them. Nobody was picking calls anymore. The guy now came back to our level. So we sat down and began to show him the word of the Lord. But he learned it late. You know that guy now? He will go out and learn what we learned many years ago. He will now learn it after five years. What has happened is that he has prolonged the time of his destiny. There are many ways you will be taught. Circumstances is one of the schools of the spirit. You see, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. That was when he became a ranking personality. He now knew God as king. So he stayed on that government. Most of you here don't know God as king. That's why you think your gift is for a show. Your gift is not for a show. God doesn't waste resources. Your gift is for advancing the frontiers of the kingdom. And it will be a shame for you to come to this camp and leave this camp without extending the kingdom in the life of at least one person. I'm not talking about corporate fellowship level. I'm talking about you as a kingdom agent. If you don't do that, it means you know God as Father. And if you know God as Father, I tell you, you may receive everything in this kingdom, but you will never be great. Because the things that make a man great in this kingdom are the quality of service that he renders because he comes under the government of God. There are many people living their lives without government. They wake up when they want, they do what they want, they spend their money the way they want it. You are not walking the path of greatness. Nobody that lives the way he wants can ever amount to anything with God. And when we talk greatness in this kingdom, we are not just talking about being wealthy. We are talking about being rich with God. And the only way you can be rich with God is through obedience to Him. You have known Him as a king. Have you not seen many people that only receive from their father, but every instruction their father has given them, they never do it. They are like rebellious children. We must come under government. There is something the Holy Ghost is trafficking through your heart every day while you are on this camp. Every day, there is something is trafficking through your heart. You have never done any of them. You will pass through this camp, but you will not be relevant with God. I came to let you know, first, that there are spirits on this camp that have already written what you will do in the next one year. They have written it already. When you were coming from your house, they saw your vehicle coming. As you entered this camp, they saw it. They have already written your script. And they have determined what you will do in Abuja for the next one year. But may you never play the script of demonic spirits. The only way you can do it is to bring yourself back under the government of God. It may be tough. It may not be flexible. But at the end of the day, it will count. You will not only be relevant in time, you will also be relevant in eternity. Because in eternity, God, the judge, comes to certify everything you have done with what God the Father and God the King gave you. God the judge will not allow you to become anything in eternity unless you conform in alignment to the things that God the Father determined you to do with what he gave you and what God the King determined you to do with the laws that he brings to your soul. Tonight, I want to invite us to prayer. I know you have lived the way you want up until now. I know you even made a girlfriend. It's possible. I know that you have a plan already with somebody for both of you to serve in Guarimpa or in Game Village, I'm aware. But I want us to pray tonight and tell the Lord 
I have appreciated you as father. But tonight I want you to be king and judge over my life. By implication, as king, it means I don't want to live my life unto myself. I don't want to live my life for pleasure and for my appetite. The Bible said, He that liveth for pleasure is dead while he walketh. You know what it means? You are not relevant to God. So as far as he's concerned, you are no longer on earth. When God is checking, he will not look for you. That's why God can enter a city. He finds only one man. God will enter a territory. He's looking for men. He finds two people. He's seen the other people, but they are not there. He came to the garden. The moment Adam disaligned, he said, Adam, Adam, where are thou? So you can be on this camp. God will look for, but he will find only three men. May you be counted. And may you be numbered in Zion. So that when God comes, you will not be so difficult to find on his radar. When he comes and is looking for men, may you collide with him. See, there are certain men that God doesn't look for them. When God show up, they find God. Abraham was a watcher in Mamre. When God descended, he saw three men. He knew that they were not mortal men. He said, Sars, come. The man, they were in a hurry. They were going to Sodom. He said, come. They came. He prepared food. He said, let him make food. They refused. He insisted. And when he made food and they ate and they wanted to go, God turned and said, your wife Sarah will be with child in the next time of life. See, there are certain men that they have grown beyond being found of God. They can find God. Your wife Sarah. But that was not what moved Abraham. Abraham found out, where are you going to? And God said, the iniquity of Sodom have ascended to heaven and I'm going to destroy it. And suddenly, the legislator began to speak. He's a kingdom functionary. He said, far be it from you that you, the righteous God, will destroy both the just and the unjust. What if you find 50 men in Sodom? That's not a man. See, we are on earth, but some people are living from heaven. Jesus said the son of man is in heaven. He was walking the streets of Nazareth. What if you find 50 righteous men? As you are on this camp now, you don't know the reason some of you are even receiving ventilation from heaven. It's because there are some intercessors here that are telling and discussing with God what should happen here. Most of you are here just enjoying in Babylon. You don't know that there is a Shedrach, there is a Meshach, there is an Abadnego, there is a Daniel that said they will never bow. The Bible said in Daniel chapter 6 verse 10 that as his custom was, do you know how many years the guy was in Babylon? Daniel was in Babylon for 65 years. The Bible said as his custom was, three times in the day, the guy knelt down praying and facing Jerusalem. So long as Daniel is in Babylon, there is hope for Israel. What if you find 50 righteous men? And God say, I will not destroy Sodom. God was going. He said, let the Lord of all heaven have mercy. What if you find 40 righteous men? You mean a discussion that was concluded in heaven. A man on earth can change it. These are kingdom functionaries. The devil can speak over your family. But while you walk with the El Shaddai and you travel, you beheld the laws of the spirit. And one day you rise up and you say, no, in this family, let El Shaddai reign. This is how the men of old lived their life. Jacob was old. The Bible said they told his children, they say, gather around me and I will tell you the things that will befall you. He was not prophesying. He was not blessing them. He was using his words to shape their destiny. He said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. He made Judah a king on earth and in heaven. Till tomorrow, even when Jesus came, he was called the lion of the tribe of Judah. The one who made Jesus Judah was Jacob. On earth, men are shaping the civilizations of heaven. Men could write the destinies of others because of where they went to with God. These guys understand God beyond father. They know God as king. So they can participate with him on matters of kingdom legislation. A man can come and say in the next 10 years, Lord, show mercy in Abuja. And suddenly the tide of Abuja will change. And you will wonder, why is it happening? There is a kingdom functionary. The whole kingdom was in darkness. Women were eating their children. They ran to the king. They could do nothing. And they sent to Elijah, the prophet. And he said, by this time tomorrow. He didn't consult with the laws of economics. He didn't bother about inflation or deflation. A king was talking. 
You know when God broke Jacob, he said, as a prince that has power with God and has faith. There are people that are princes in heaven, even while they are walking on the earth. He said, by this time, tomorrow, how is it possible that one man can change the economy of a nation? We call it stature in the spirit. Because the man knows God as king. He doesn't only know him as father. Everyone who knows God as father understands how to beg to receive bread and wine. But sons of altar, men who have interacted with the king, when they come to the courts of heaven, they ask questions. What are you saying about Abijah? What are you saying about Nathaniel? What are you saying about Moses? What are you saying about Makodi? They can determine the destinies of territory. They can determine the destinies of nation because they know him as king. This is where our life begins to gain value. Your beauty will vanish even in time before you get to eternity. Have you not seen beauty queen? I saw Bianca Ojuku in the 70s. There was no woman in Nigeria like her. This lady was a goddess. But age has shown her that beauty ends with time. If you want to be truly beautiful, you must interact with the I am that I am until his light shine out of you. That is what the Bible says. Paul was speaking in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 40. He said, and there are many bodies. There are celestial bodies. There are terrestrial bodies. He said, the stone has its glory. The moon has its glory. The star has its glory. And he said, different star, different in glory. Because they know how to shine by different illumination and different intensities. The Bible said, they that turn many to righteousness, they shall shine like the brightness of the truth. That's where true beauty lies. When a man interacts with God until he can carry his will like a testament and he brings it to his generation. There are certain men that if they come to a place, iniquity dies. Abraham entered Bethel and he began to raise altars. Abraham, he raised altars until he surrounded Bethel with altars. You could not do anything in Bethel that was not consistent with the will of God. Even his son, the man of the flesh, when he was walking through Bethel and he fell on the altar, his carnality was broken because the man has secured the boundaries of Bethel. Nothing that is not of God can walk in Bethel because he understands the intelligence of interacting with the king. You want your life to come. You have to look away from natural things. Mundane things have no value. When a man is ferried beyond time, he will look back and discover the garment of flesh will be off. At that time, it's what he has with God that will shine. His righteousness will shine. His knowledge of God will shine. His obedience will shine. His fear for God will shine. Those are the things that travel with us beyond eternity. But the devil deceives you. He tells you it's about your hair. He tells you it's about your complexion. He tells you it's about your height. He tells you it's about your car. All of those things are mundane. They end in time. But when we cross through the veil of immortality and we stand before the God of Zion, that time the things that shine, they are the things that are walking to us through our obedience to the throne of God. You want to cry? And tell the Lord, here I am, use me. Captain Kuman prayed. She said, Lord, if I ask nothing, then use me. Because I have nothing. Why? She judged that everything that is flesh has no value. That is where Paul entered. He said, we are the circumcision. But worship God in the spirit. Rejoicing in Christ Jesus. Having no confidence in the flesh. I am an oracle. I am intelligent. I am a barrister. I know what to do. But I have calculated that flesh has no value. So he called himself the circumcision. We only know how to worship God in the spirit. There's nothing you have in the natural that is an advantage. Only the things that is worked into you through obedience can count in eternity. Hey! Kabara Safata Kingdom functionaries must arise. We have too many believers, but few kingdom functionaries. When Jesus sent us out, he didn't send us as believers. He sent us as martyrs. Martyrs, martyrs. Men that can bring witness that is eternal in stature. Martyrs. Too many Christians. Abuja has a population of over 60% Christian. But where is the kingdom? You can't find it in the market. You can't find it in the church. You can't find it in the school. 
even here in the camp where you have left your family we can see kingdom you know the father but you don't know the king you don't know the church of all parate sapari ana kavizu sas sasasadis sasasadis that kingdom functionaries will arise we say saviors we come up out of nansai to join the mountains of isa that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our god where are the modekayas where are the tekemayas where are the estas where are the tekaras our generation needs mission also that god in us it is written they believe and have spoken we also have in the same spirit of faith we believe and therefore we speak The Bible said the heir, so long as he's a child, differeth nothing from a servant, even though he be lord of all. But there are some that the Bible said the spirit of God cried in their heart, calling Abba, Abba, Father. Those ones want to see the will of God find the expression. Those are the type that pray not my way Lord but thine. Can you pray tonight and say Lord, not my will but thine. I have many plans, I have plans, but Lord, not my will but thine. Not my will but thine. Kali sabania taveska brada vanis. Zete tedeska brada vanila cosa fa la hata. Amor sapare samitaila tetelila batria vanaskash sedetana 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 ha ambra safa te kabaria mali de taite kazezale variandra pada vamos copre sa fila hey that many saviors will rise men who not only know justification men who understand judgment judgment the reward system of eternity and on the strength of which they will commit their lives perpetually in the service of the king our world is plunging into darkness principalities and powers having a free day but the devourers are sleeping the modekaya are sleeping when will the men of stature arise kabo samaita feli kanti sakaila manrina hast hey you don't know what god has put in you there's a treasure there's a treasure your flesh will not let it manifest there's a treasure He said we have these churches in nothing vessel that the excellency may be of God. There's a church of brother fan into flame. This church I give unto you son Timothy that you will fan to flame the grace of God that is upon thee. Thank you Holy Spirit. 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 Lord tonight let it be a time of recruitment. The ones that carry the mark, the mark, the mark of the hunter. The mark. The ones carrying the mark. Holy Spirit I ask that you release a fresh fresh grace upon them tonight. Carry us of the mark. Thank you Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, we are out of time. There are most of you here that the light of God shines upon you because there's an assignment. What you may not have realized is the peculiarity of that assignment. There are certain things that God has ordained for you to do and only you can do it in this generation. But it begins with commitment. 
commit her. Holy Spirit, even as you hover above us by the prophetic spirit, we ask tonight that as many as have made contact with that realm, let the spirit begin to download. Aya, just be calm as the Holy Ghost broods upon you. The vessels that were implicated by this move of God, the vessels that are implicated. By this move of the Spirit, Father, let them begin to hear the trumpet that sounds in Zion. Holy Spirit, Sakua, Hayine Takai Ziviza Zash, Sekarua Zino Zakakizo, Patara Sidika Shabinda Rahatwa, Belash. Somebody's life is about to change. 
the angels that blow the shofar, they begin to make contact. Ah, oh my God, where are the prophets? Shabarate, a sonata, kapara, shenyatai, homumula, hairete, hososaka, parakaboa, parakaboa, homo sekaita, homole la dinata, telakabo zakatis, rakapa, homo netoa, oh wa 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 wa, receive your trumpet, receive your trumpet in the spirit, where are the prophets? Oh, 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 dimensions listen they are about to begin to speak i lose your vocal cords let the utterance flow like a river let it flow let it flow let it flow i unlock your vocal cords right now let the prophetic help those who are under the power so they don't get injured it's about to get violent let it flow let it flow sateto sapanata Rekapadoa Suzas Selekamas I connect you with Zion I connect you with Zion I connect you with Zion There's a breaking news coming from the heavens Let it flow It's time to hear It's time to hear Oh my, oh my, oh my. Receive the ability to decode the message. Receive the ability to decode the message. I need scribes now, scribes. If we don't have scribes, let's get recorders. The messages are about to be decoded. It's not about falling down. There's nothing big about falling. But God came as a prophetic spirit. There's a message. I need scribes. Get it recorded. You are about to receive the next prophetic direction. Makamatakaya. Can you give that by volume? River flow. Let it river flow. In your Just the keyboard is now. They will activate another gift. The gift of interpretation of tongues will be activated. Father, even as you bring us message by tongues, right now I speak as a priest. I declare that the ability to decode the language of the spirit be imparted upon your people so that every message be interpreted in the name of Jesus Perash, 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 perash. let that angel touch another one in the name of Jesus receive in the name of Jesus you have asked for my river, oh my Lante. Oh, the river, the river is flowing. In a woman, in a man, in a man, in a man, in a man. The spirit of prophecy is migrating from her. It's over in again. It's over. It's over. Lift your hands first, Apple. Somebody else is about to pick it. It's over. It's over. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Who is that one? Holy Spirit. We receive, we receive, we receive. The spirit hovers, he hovers, he hovers, he hovers, he hovers, he hovers, he hovers. Take in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ecco, <laughs> 
The Holy Ghost is going to the left side of this hall now to find another vessel, to find another vessel, to find another vessel, to find another vessel, to find another vessel. Shalabandra Braska Valiga Brados, Zella Kabira Branda Zozoria Taliasta, Zatela Mandragilos, Shalibo Rahaski Palagash. Palagashka, 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 Rapanato Zozore Bagatias. The hand of God descends. He descends. He descends. <laughs> oh, Allah has his ash. Zenakail of Rajaziza. I lose your vocal cords. I lose your vocal cord. I lose your cord. <laughs> Thank you, Father. You had an interpretation. Come quickly. Let's hear you. Salabandra Silos. There is somebody who has never interpreted tongues before. Never before now. But while they spoke, you knew what they were saying. Come. And there is also a minister that picked part of the message. Please get the microphone for them quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. There's somebody that has never interpreted tongues before. But while they were speaking, you knew. Because it was activated in your life. And there's also a minister that picked it. You are the one? You are the one? Let me hear you through the mic. You are the one? You have never interpreted tongues before. Let me hear you. Talk to, to, talk, to talk into the microphone. Sorry? You have never interpreted tongues before. But Sorry? You are not the one I'm looking for. But you, you, don't worry. You will flow. We will hear you. There is somebody that has never interpreted tongue. But while they speak, you knew what they were saying. Who is the person? You are the one? Okay, come. Let's hear the sister. Quick, give her the mic. Let's get the message. You have to be audible so we hear what you are saying. She said, I am the Lord. I seated in the heavenly places. I rule. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I'm seated in the heavenly places. I've risen or I rose. I rose. And I'm the Lord. God is rising among this camp. And something is going to. Let me tell you something. A new season is breaking upon this ministry. While we were going home, the Lord spoke to my brother, Pastor Victor, that a new face has just opened. That God began to walk in two years ago. But it's about to break upon you. And she just confirmed it. Let me hear you, sir. Her last statement was stand before me and be the perfect. Stand before me and I'll make glory, glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Somebody's faith is bubbling. What did you hear? Have you interpreted tongues before? Flo, let me hear you. Say that I'm sending coals of fire upon the people. I am sending coals of fire upon the people. Men will be set on fire this evening. Flo, read. You had a message. Come, come, come. Let's hear your interpretation. 
Have you interpreted tongues before? You've never. But why they speak, you had understanding. What I heard was, he said, To all who call me, I will answer. To all who call me, I will answer. And I Listen, will... those of you that came with petition, you are the one God is speaking to now. This is how these things work. It's not about the show of falling down, country tears. This is where it profits us. Yes. And he said that I will judge all men according to their works. I will judge all men according to their works. We don't have time. Man of God, we, dis- we, we explain these things to you later. Come. Praise God. As have you interpreted tongues before? Not really, but I have a special one today. Flo. As this guy was speaking in tongues, he was saying there's the fire in Bogolada. There was a fire spreading. And this place would be an extension of that fire. But he's, he, That's gave, your new season. he gave an instruction to the man of God that he should not he be He was afraid. giving instructions to the man of God. That he should not be afraid to step out. That he should not be afraid to step out. There's a fire spreading in Wagwalada. And this will be an extension of that fire. And he says, God's servant, be not afraid to step out. There's a new face. River flow. Let the tunnel river flow. In your church, once again, let it not be seen. River flow, river flow. Let it not flow. In your church, once again, let it not be seen. Another mess, another interpretation. Come on, come on, let's hear you. I am mighty. I am mighty in the midst of you. I am mighty. I am mighty in the midst of you. From this meeting, people will pick up mantles. From this meeting, people will pick up mantles. And I see somebody healing. stand behind that brother. The power of God is strong on him. I see, I see, I see healings taking place. I see healings healing taking place. place. Healings taking place. Healings taking place. Glory to Jesus. Somebody has written an interpretation. He said, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Go ahead and give God the praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. We have to we have to shut down and look into the word of God briefly because if we continue like this, another layer will come again. And another layer will come. And another layer will come. But it's the word of God that builds men up. Hallelujah. You may be seated. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Sometimes when you go very high, you need to calm down. Else you just keep flowing and then you, you may just lose the service. Thank you, Father. We began the conference and the emphasis of God have been well defined. You know, when you begin to do business and your emphasis shifts to the kingdom, then it means God really wants to do a serious business with the people. There are many possibilities that are enshrined in the promises of God. Many possibilities. In fact, the Bible said, according as his divine power had given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. He said he has given us exceeding great and precious promises that by them we may become partakers of the divine, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. In Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. So your interaction with the Spirit of God is one that has a whole lot of promises for you. 
So if you are not careful, you'll be carried away by the promises of God and then you will only walk with God to receive from Him. But when we go through the pages of scriptures, we realize that the men that became mighty with God, the men that have eternal implication as touching the dealing of God with humankind, they were not necessarily men that mastered the act of receiving from God. They are actually men that developed the act of giving to God consciously, including their own very lives. And we say the borderline that separates people from babyhood life in the kingdom into maturity is their ability to come to that point where they discern what is the burden in the heart of the Father. And they are willing to give up everything it takes in order to establish that which is in the heart of the Father in their day and time within the confines of their habitation. Such was the life that people like John lived. And the Bible will tell us how that the whole generation was wielded to John as an inheritance. He said, in the days of John. That means if you lived in this world, in the time that John lived, the only way you can be found in the archive of heaven, just in case the brochure of heaven is open and they want to locate you, the passcode for that generation was the name of John. Because the whole of that generation had been wielded to John as an inheritance. So just in case you lived in the days of John, you have no place. All that you have is captured within the borderline of inheritance that was committed to the hands of John. So if they want to find Apostle Alpha as mighty as he is, just in case he lived in the days of John, the only way you will find him is to open the lexicon of the life of John. That's where you will find Alpha. Because this man was able to give up his life for the workings and the manifestation of the purpose of Jehovah in his day and time. And we said the only way a man can journey to that depth in God is when his discernment is furnished sufficiently and he knows what is in the heart of the Father. And the moment he sustains an accurate discernment, even his own lifestyle will change. His priorities will change. His focus will change. Because that discernment will become a fulcrum that determines the direction that he will go. Because in that generation, nobody understood that which God wanted to do. Even in the priesthood, the priesthood had been compromised. They had two high priests. A political high priest and an obligatory high priest. Because they did not know what God was doing. 400 years had passed. The prophetic voice had been shut down in Israel. Because in the regions of Hades, the principalities knew what God was doing. They knew that this season was the time for the manifestation of the Messiah. And the only way the Messiah would come into the earth realm was through the voice of a prophet. So the prophetic voice was crippled in that land. And for 400 years, Israel was in darkness. The people were supposed to cry at that time for God to show mercy and open a vent from the heights of the heaven so that a voice will rise from among them. But they did not understand. That was the time when they were mastering the act of prosperity. God, in his ways, had provided the promise of prosperity for us. But what God was doing in that season had nothing to do with prosperity. What God was doing in that season was hovering among humankind so that by all means he will find the voice that we cry. And that voice will become the gateway through which the Christ will come into the world. But the people had no understanding because their discernment was faulty. Until the prophet John arose and John began to cry in the wilderness. And the cry of John became the fulfillment of a prophecy that was spoken 700 years before his emergence. How did he know that that which Isaiah spoke about was him? Because the moment John came to maturity, the first thing John did was that he detached himself from his family. His father was a priest after the order of Abia. According to the patterns of natural selection, John had no disadvantage in time. You heard Paul Bango talking to us yesterday, how that as a little boy they had more than 10 cars. He traveled to nations. He did his master's degree in order. Why would he come laboring like this? John understood that value in that generation was your ability to find what God was doing and to align with it. So John left his father's comfort and he went into the wilderness. The Bible said he was feeding on white honey and locusts and he was dressed in camel skin and he was there until he was an adult. The Bible said he was there in Luke 180 until the day of his showing forth unto Israel. Why would a man forsake pleasure? And all the beauties and privileges that he had. There is not, it's not a sin to enjoy those privileges. He was born into that bloodline according to divine ordination. But while he came into earth, he, he perceived what God wanted to do. And on the strength of what he perceived, his judgment was altered. His priorities were changed. And John would on his own depart from his family and go into the wilderness. And we said that order is the pattern that God establishes for every man 
that will be able to wield the hand of God. The Bible said concerning Moses that when Moses was come of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than the pleasures of Egypt, which is for a season, because he saw him that was invincible. So we say if you have not discerned what God wants to do in a generation, your priorities will be wrong, your actions will be wrong, even though what you are doing may not be a sin, but we take steps that will deny you of relevance in eternity. Until we get discernment correctly about what God is doing in a generation, we will not be relevant with God. And the moment we said this kind of discernment is furnished, then a believer is ready to do business in the heights of the heavens. Because when we talk about kingdoms, we are talking about thrones and legislations. When we talk about kingdoms, we are talking about purposes that are born in the heart of a spirit. When we talk about kingdom, we are talking about emphasis that predates the very creation of the foundation of the world. Every man that begins to discern kingdom, he will know that what is pushing and driving him existed before he was born. So he comes to this world not to be creative. He comes to this world to discover what he must do in order to establish the counsel of God that was fabricated by the community of the Godhead before time itself began. And until a man is able to walk through those paths, no matter who he is in time, he will not be relevant. Kingdom is a game of thrones and spirits are the masters in this game. And if we don't understand that even the civilization of humankind is born from the politics that takes place in the heights of the heavens, you will be frustrated and you will try to make headway in life until the day when the veils of the divide are open and you cross from time into eternity. That is when you will realize that you live but you are not wise. Jesus came and he spoke a parable in Luke chapter 12 verse 20. The rich fool had gathered his pants and it was full. And he said, his soul will rest. And he said, God spoke from heaven. He said, you fool. You fool. You have mastered the intelligence of dominating the earth realm. How come you have not heard the whispers from Zion? How come you have not understood that your life was given to you as an eternal investment to fulfill a purpose that predates your existence? How come you have not understood that life has no meaning except you learn to fraternize with the spirit and on account of your fraternity with that spirit you find something that is bigger than you? How come you think that your life is all about what you have gathered in your palm? He say you fool. And the man journeyed from time into eternity and he discovered that everything that he gathered was mundane. It doesn't sustain the stature that gives a man relevance in the heights of the heavens. Kingdom business is a politics in heaven. It's a game of thrones. And until we understand how this politics runs, we will not be relevant. I told us yesterday that the reason our territory is in darkness, even though we move in the mightiest of anointing, is because we have not understood kingdom. We are in the church. Our priority is to grow and master the prophetic so that we can call names and phone numbers. We have not understood kingdom. In the days of the fathers, the prophetic did not begin with forensics. The prophetic began with cutting through the borderlines of territories and nations. So the fathers, they prophesied and they conquered nations. They prophesied and they bettered generations. Because every time a man is able to speak and affect the territory, Every time you catch a vision that has an impact on the territory, a seal breaks in heaven. And only ranking men have the ability to perceive when seals are broken. Did you read the book of Revelation? The guy will see a seal break and something happens on earth. The reason we cannot alter things within our territory is because our prophetic is within the ambience of anointing. We have no authority in the heights of Zion. There are no prophets that can dictate when seals are broken in heaven. We are doing healing, healing, healing. There's nothing wrong with it. But what happens to the territory? The lady... Oh, I, I can't say some things here. They will say he's a wicked man. <laughs> it's better for a lady who contacts HIV to repent and go to heaven that will be healed and go back into the world and die. All we do is healing. See, let me... Wait, let me show you the foundation of this politics from the scriptures. Open Ezekiel chapter 28 from verse 13. I want to show you the place of anointing and authority. So that you will see the futility of only walking by an anointing. You know when you talk like this, some people think you are fighting the prophetic. Far be it from it. When you talk like this, some people feel you are fighting the healing move. Far be it from it. But everything we do will be a waste if we cannot affect our territory. Because until what we do has an impact in territories, we are not winning in this war. Our generation can be lost. 
Because everybody around that we give all the word of knowledge to and all the healing to will be agents of darkness. Our church will be a, con a conclave of people manipulated by different spirits. So our meeting will be a meeting point for agents of darkness. That is why people come to church now. That is where all the virgins are displowered because they join the choir. The guy who is the head usher is a puppet in the hand of, of a, an immoral spirit. Meanwhile, the man of God can't dictate that there's a principality manipulating the work of God. He's growing in number, but he's only assembling agents of darkness. The guy is the head of the choir, but he has slept with more than five of them. And those five he has slept with have also slept with five others. So it is in the church that he breeds agents of darkness, but he doesn't understand. So the same people that leave the church are the same people that are in the territory, and the territory is a, is a portrait of Hades. The same people in the church are the same people on campus, but the campuses are a portrait of Hades. On Sunday morning, the whole campus is dry because all of us are in church auditorium. But on Monday, when we come to the streets of the campus, we find daughters of Jezebel. Naked queens, they call themselves slave queens, but they were they are choir members. On, on Friday, you go to the club and then you find all the people that dominate the church on Sunday. So the thing now is a social gathering and it is regulated by days, not by thrones. So on Sunday they come to church because that is their religious life. On Friday they are in clothes because that is their pleasure life. It's regulated by days, not by thrones. Kingdom, kingdom. It's time for us to not just do business with the anointing, but to do business with thrones. Ezekiel 28 from verse 13. The Bible began to reveal to us the most anointed being in this world before Jesus Christ. There was none anointed at this being until the appearing of Jesus Christ. But the, devil, the Bible revealed to us how that this being understood priorities. This being was not moved by anointing. He knew he had all the anointing you could ever imagine. But when it comes to matters of territory, matters of government, he knew that anointing was not enough. This is why when we talk, we challenge the prophets, we challenge the preachers like ourselves until God stretches us to come to a point where we can die to flesh and cause the hand of God to break the, the bondage of corruption that is within the borders of our habitation. That guy was anointed. He said, thou was in the garden, was in Eden, the garden of God. In fact, from verse 12, the Bible said, Thou that select the psalm, he said, from thy beginning, he said, you were a, a, the guy was a completion of wisdom and beauty. So if you wanted to see the intelligence of God's architectural masterpiece, if you wanted to see the revelation of God's ability and insight as touching wisdom, all you needed to do was to behold Lucifer. Lucifer was an effulgence of wisdom. If he takes a step, his, his wisdom you will see and beauty. If he alters his voice, his voice was a communication of wisdom. The highest form of wisdom that could ever be imagined was what constituted his fabrication. He said the guy was a constitution of wisdom and beauty. He said you were in Eden. So before Eden was ever created in time, the Eden that was in Zion, the guy dwelt there. So he's a being of the presence. He understands the presence of God. He was a master when it comes to interacting with the presence. He could discern the radars of heaven. Every time there's a movement in heaven, he can tell you that this is what this means. Because if you go down, it will even tell you that thou that seal it, thou that cover it. He said you were the anointed cherub that covered it. So the guy was in the business of, of preserving the jealousy and the glory of God. Till today, that's the responsibility of the cherubims. And the cherubims are the highest ranking angels in the heavens of God. So he was a lead angel in the quadrant of the cherubims. The Bible said you move to and fro in the midst of the coals of fire. That is the responsibility of the seraphims. It is the seraphims that preserve the holiness of God and communicate the same. Did you read Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1? He said, in the day that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord and his train filled the temple. And he said he saw the seraphims and they had six wings. Two covered their face, two covered their leg, and with two they flew. And they carried the stone from the midst of the coals of fire. And they touched it on the tongue of the prophet and instantly the dimensions of holiness was crystallized on the prophet and he said oh I'm a man of unclean days this guy was the national prophet but the moment he interacted with the seraphims the dimensions of holiness was revealed Lucifer was a lead angel in the ranks of the, of the seraphims he was not only a cherubim he was a seraphim 
And the Bible said he was the custodian of wisdom and beauty. In fact, he said you were created with ten precious stones. The diamond you labor for to wear, the guy had it as his covering. The gold that you key to buy and put a small dot on your ring, the guy had it as his covering. So everything you pursue, everything the anointing can provide, he was full of it. But he understood that government is not wielded on the strength of anointing. So in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12, he said, I will ascend to the heavens. He knew that this world is regulated by thrones. This is where the politics of the heavens take place. It's a business of throne, a game of ruling and ranking entities that have the power to move the possibilities that are crafted into thrones in Zion. The guy was not satisfied with anointing. He knew territorial matters were more important. Meanwhile, we come to church and we become superstar. Because you lift your right hand and people fall down. You stay around that mountain for 20 years. And your territory grows into darkness. Because you lay hands on people and few people are healed. You dwell there. Before Jesus ever began to walk in healing, he said, the prince of this world come to me and find them nothing. He settled the matters of territory before he began. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 4 verse 16, the moment Jesus entered into his ministry, he said he went to the borders of Zebulun that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. He said, they that sat in the midst of the shackles of death, a great light is sprung forth. So before Jesus began to heal, he dealt with territory. Because territories have priority beyond men. The possibilities of men can be marginalized by territory. That's why Israel was in Egypt for 430 years. Even though they were seeing the glory of God move ahead of them. They saw the pillar of cloud. They saw the pillar of fire. But what Egypt did to them, the move of God could not change it. Until you deal with the influence of territory, people have no, general, have no future. The land of Zebulun. Meanwhile, we are satisfied with gathering people. So the goal now is about increasing the number of our audience. So that we can come and manifest God. And manifest God. And when they see us manifesting God, they go back to their offices and their kingpins of, 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 of Brian. After they see us manifesting God, they go back to their campuses and they are daughters of Jezebel. And we have no power to break the influence of those demonic entities over their soul. And we say we are doing ministry. We are doing ministry. We are not wise. We don't understand priority. Because when the immortal shows up and he checks the quality of our work, you will discover there are no men standing. When God comes, he will not judge your ministry by the volume and the, and the size of the people. He will judge them by kingdom functionaries that you have raised. That was why Jesus was comfortable with 500 people. And he selected 12 out of them. When Jesus left, apart from the son of perdition, all you needed to do was to pick anybody. Anybody you pick, the criteria was, this man went in and out with us from the beginning. That's kingdom. Anyone you pick can represent Peter. Anyone. So they picked two people, and they casted lot and carried one, and the guy was doing the same thing that all the apostles were doing. That is kingdom. And the apostles sustained the same pattern. Controversy, crisis broke out and they scattered. And Philip, who was a deacon, the Bible says he went to Samaria. He preached Christ there and the city was full of joy. A deacon can take a city. Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. But here you can send 10 pastors from one church. They cannot take a tent because we don't know kingdom. We have mastered how to milk money out of people's pockets. We know all the scriptures that we tilt their souls so that they bring their money. But we have no power in territories. So the principalities look at us and they laugh. Because we don't understand the game of thrones. The game of thrones. We don't know it. If we know it, our priorities will change. If we know it, our lifestyle will change. Our prayer points will change. We don't know the game of thrones. Kingdom. The devil was so anointed. So anointed. But he was not moved by anointing. He needed a throne. He needed a throne because until you move and operate by a throne, you have no eternal relevance. You can be forgotten. The day you leave the scene, you can be forgotten. But when you walk with a throne, you are eternal. Your feet is planted forever because thrones are foundations of creation. Creations are projections of the powers that are wielded by thrones. 
So the guy went for a throne. He wanted the throne. He said, I will ascend to heaven. I will move above the height of the congregation. Ha! So the guy was that wise. But look at us apostles. We now move like this. When we come to the meeting, we do like this. People fall down. And then if we are leaving that meeting, we walk like this. We are anointed men. The same people that fell when we did like this. When you find somebody who murdered somebody and they want to investigate, his name is Christian. You go to the club and you are doing evangelism. What is your, is your name? Her name is Mary. Raised and baptized in the church, but they are agents of darkness. And we come, we do like this. They fall down. We are not wise. This is why the principalities don't take us serious. Because they know our priority is wrong. And our priority is wrong because we have not discerned correctly. The game of thrones. In your church, once again, let eternity be seen. River flow, river flow. Let eternal river flow. In your church, once again. Let it turn into So when Jesus came to this world, he refused to be distracted with all the healings, with all the anointing. At a point, they wanted to set him up to make him a king. He was facing the cross. And then the disciples marveled. They said, people are coming from other nations. Your ministry is about to go global. Jesus said, except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die. It abided alone. What do you mean? International ministry that people are hustling for. They came with joy to Jesus. Oh boy, this your healing ministry have gone global. People have heard of you. They are coming now. And then he withdrew. He said, except a corn of weed falls to the ground and die. It abided alone. He knew the game of thrones. Because until he's nailed on that cross, he cannot of- occupy the office of the Christ. And if he doesn't occupy the office of the Christ, the Holy Ghost will not come. And if the Holy Ghost doesn't come, the church will not be born. And if the church is not born, the eternal purpose of God will be marginalized. Because the church is the... It's like... Have you, been, have you seen somebody who is in the water before? And then maybe you create something like a balloon and put the person inside. So he survives on the oxygen that is in that balloon. The world is falling. Creation is corrupt and falling. The only way you survive here is within the ambience of that institution called the church. The anointing cannot bet the church. Healing the sick can't bet the church. Raising the dead can't bet the church. The only way the church will be born is for the Son of Man to be nailed to the cross. So when they came with global ministry, he knew that was not the time. Now, this is not to say global ministry is wrong. But he, in his own calendar, he could discern to know exactly what God wanted to do. A point came, it was so difficult for him because it was not his choice. It was not his will. So he had to go to get some money and pray. He said, Father, if it were possible, let this cup pass me by. He said, yet not my will, but thine. A kingdom man is praying. When he prays, he prays the body of the Father. When he prays, he prays the jealousy of God. And he was compelled to go to the cross. And he submitted his will and went to the cross. And the moment he came out, he said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now you can go into all the worlds. Now you can go into all the worlds. Because now you can challenge the principalities and powers. Now you can take over the territories. Before now, all I carried was an anointing. So when I came to the sick, he said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was it. But now I don't have, a, I don't have only anointing. Now I have authority. Because there is a throne I have ascended. It's called the office of the Christ. So when they called Peter in Acts chapter 2 from verse 30, he said, the same Jesus that you crucified is today exalted both as Lord and Christ. And on the strength of that office that he entered, you and I have a calling. Because the question of redemption after the fall was who has believed our report? Unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And who shall declare his generation? There was no way you and I could have ministry. There is no way you and I could have a hope. There is no way you and I could have eternity with God. Except Jesus ascended that throne. Because that throne is what will become the office of the administration of heaven. That is why Paul Bango is an apostle. 
Paul Bango is not an apostle because he was born an apostle. Paul Bango is an apostle because an office has apportioned him that responsibility. And every time Paul Bango speaks, that office backs him up with power. Every territory Paul Bango enters, that territory backs him up with power. So now he doesn't function by anointing alone. On the strength of that office, he can redefine somebody else's life. That is why the Bible said, He that descended was the same that ascended to the heights of the heaven. And when he ascended, he gave gifts unto men. He said, To some he gave to be apostles, to some he gave to be prophets, to some he gave to be evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints. So every time you see saints not equipped, it means we don't understand the place of our office. The goal of the office is not first of all to meet your need, it's to equip you. It's a taboo for a Christian to ask for healing for 10 years. That means the one where he's sitting under have not taught him well. Because it's not only, there's nothing wrong in receiving healing. But the goal is for you to begin to walk it. But you can only walk it if you are equipped. There are many believers who are not equipped. That's why I cry when I go to prophetic ministry. Prophetic ministries that are supposed to be the intelligence for giving direction to people's life and bringing them into maturity to find the pathway of their own life. That's where you find the babes, the greatest babes, because the man wants to be a god among people. So somebody wants to travel, he comes, he says, Papa. Somebody wants to buy biscuit, he comes, he says, Papa. He has a nightmare, he says, Papa. We don't know kingdom. Apostle Alpha was sharing with us yesterday how that even in our families the devil pursue us there and suppress us in our own family. We are not talking territory now. We are talking family. The guy is a believer for 10 years but in his family the devil pursues him into his family and is suppressing him because we don't understand. But the Bible says giving no place to the devil because these guys are interested in territories. They are interested in space so that they can rule. We need to journey to another place where we come under a new government and we ask the Lord to teach us how to move his finger so that our territories can be delivered. Else we have not discerned the move of God correctly. This business is a game of thrones. Until a man is regulated by a throne, he has no power in his territory. Because the ones that are manipulating the territory, they are also enthroned beings. Did you notice that when the devil fell, he didn't stop them? He was still anointed. He was still graced and empowered. But he needed a throne. So the guy came, God planted him in Eden and gave him authority over creation. He said, have dominion over the air, the land and the water. But the guy did not understand that his greatest strength was not his ability to look at the animals and call them by the names that God gave them. That was anointing at work. He could look at the fish and say, this is your name. And that name is the same name God gave that fish before he created it. He was carried away by what he was doing in the garden. He didn't know that his authority is what the devil was fighting. So when the devil came, he traded for authority. And the moment he lost authority, he lost power over the territory. This is the crisis we have today. And that is why we talk so much. But the impact is not revealed in the government. It's not revealed in the media. It's not revealed in the educational world. It's not revealed in the systems of the world. Meanwhile, Jesus sent us into the world, not to the church. Elohim, Elohim Adonai. Elohim, Elohim Adonai. I'm talking the way I'm talking. I'm talking the way I'm talking because this is a conference for kingdom functionaries. Most of you that came here, you are not coming trusting God for bread and wine. You didn't come here trusting God for healing. Even though if you have need for healing, you will receive it this night. But you came because there, there is a hunger in your soul. You want to find out what you need to do to be relevant. That's why you came. Even though you have certain needs which are legitimate, and it's right for you to ask God for them. There is a hunger you can't explain. Every time you cannot pray, you cry. You are telling yourself, why can't I pray? I know I should be praying. Because somehow, the energy is flowing and your soul is contacting it. Because you are part of those that are numbered. 
You can perceive it. You know, you know that this season I should consecrate, I should fight, but you can't. So when you heard about the kingdom conference, you gravitated. You are looking for somebody to say something that will strike a chord in your soul. Because there is a lion sleeping on your inside. The reason you came, you are looking for a word. You are looking, you have been in church. Some of you move in the anointing, but you know there is something you there is a chord that should be struck. You have tried, you have shaken yourself, but you know it's not working. You need somebody to touch a chord because there's something in your soul. I told them in Port Accord last week. I said, All our Deborahs are in the clubs. Do you know the courage it takes for a lady to stand at a junction in, in the night waiting for any man that shows up? You, if you stand there, you will speak in tongues for three hours before you stand there. The Deborahs, they are still wearing bomb shorts and walking in our clubs. They go to church, but nobody can say something that strikes a chord in their soul. They can't realize their ordination. The Mordecaias, they are the ones doing Yahoo, Yahoo. The people that through wisdom and technocracy should know what to say so that deliverance can come to a nation. That same intelligence, they are using it to receive dollars from the white man. Mordecaias. And on Sunday they come to church, and church is a social gathering. We need to cry. This is why yesterday I, I kept emphasizing dealing. And that's what my friends have been emphasizing. That until you are conquered, you can't conquer. That government, that office called the Christ, will break you. It will break you. See, that one, we say these things are not doctrine. Some people who are apologists, they confront me and say, are you trying to say doctrine is not important? It's only a foolish man that will undermine doctrine. Because our heritage, the totality of our heritage is encapsulated within the borderline of doctrine. But your consecration is different from doctrine. It is the office of the Christ that will regulate you. Some of you, for you to walk in the sphere of a kingdom, you will have to part way with your certificate. Some of you will part way with your family. Some of you will part way with money. It's not because the doctrine of prosperity is wrong. But the assignment you have to do is such that will make you stay in the wilderness until the day of your showing forth. I was telling them that in order to maximize the move of God, the last thing God gives us is influence and prosperity. Everybody you see talking, you don't know how many years have gone underground. You don't know the labors and sacrifice. Some of you will part ways with traveling out of this country. Because when we talk kingdom, men are arrayed their ranks according to their responsibilities and assignments until they come to a point where that throne can regulate them. Because most of us, we are suffering from spiritual paralysis. When Jesus is moving like this, the hand is dead because of our appetites. The God of this world has saturated us with lust. So God said, go to Anyangba. No, what you are planning, according to your plan, is Lagos. Lagos, Lagos is more... The way you are seeing it, Lagos has more future. Oh, it's Lagos, Lagos. Meanwhile, that throne says your portion is Anyangba. But you can't go there. They say, you, it's Meduguri. No, no, okay, 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 okay. The last time I checked, if I go to Abuja, I will get a job in three months. Because you have seen that car that you need to buy. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the Muslim community in 1990, they gave a boast and said before 2020, they will raise the mayor of London. And four years before that time, they have a mayor of London. Meanwhile, we were in church, we are pursuing cars and money. Every time we give a testimony of breakthroughs about, the, now I, I had a, a, a bicycle, now I have a jeep. Meanwhile, like he was saying yesterday, a PhD holder will come from Medjugorje and become a wheelbarrow pusher in your community because he needs to map that territory. They have seen in their calendar that in 2050, Abuja will be their land. So what they are doing, why you, you are appreciating the cars you have, they are mapping the territory. Hope you know before they enter the promised land, Moses sent spies. They mapped the land. They have separated the land and the land was already a heritage. The land has been given to Judah, to Issachar. All of the lands were mapped. What they are doing is they are mapping your territory. You think the guy is a shoe shiner. You don't know that that guy is an astrologer. Every evening you see him walking around and chanting incantations. He is communicating with the moon to find out the portion that belongs to the tribe that come from Meduguri North. Meanwhile, that's when you, you cross your leg. You are watching Big, Boy, Big Brother Niger. That's why you are a Christian, but you are not a kingdom functionary. Come here. Are you okay? Put that water there. It's a PhD holder you are talking to. 
1958, Amado Bello went to Lagos and he looked at Lagos. He said, what? Instantly, he said, he will change the lot. Meanwhile, the reason he went to Lagos was to meet with the Queen of England and he came to collect one book on abstract geometry. That's master's degree mathematics because you need to master geometry in order to do astrology very intelligently. So he traveled as at that time. We don't even have pastors that time that have understanding. These guys were local chiefs. Nigeria had not had independence, but they know that Nigeria belonged to them. What do you think they know? You say they are illiterate. That guy is hearing VOA and voice, he's hearing Voice of America every day with his radio in the village, in the bush. You, you are here, all you are interested in is Big Brother Niger. You are looking for a job. Meanwhile, a master's degree holder will travel from Kano and he will be here for 10 years. Meanwhile, before he went to the university, he did an admiralty for 10 years. That admiralty is to help him break. So that anything he has in life, he knows it's Islam that gave it to him. Because as a little boy of seven, they depart, detached him from his family and threw him to another land. So he survived by the mercy of Islam. So he knows that his life belongs to Islam. Even though he has a PhD, any instruction is give, that is given to him, he can abandon that PhD to fulfill it. But here you tell Christians, you say, look, it's, hey, come on, it's preaching. What do you mean? What do you mean? If we continue like this in 2050, most of our borders will be lost. I'm from Benue. They sold the whole of Wadata to the Muslim people. Now Benue doesn't have any land in Wadata. They own part of Benue state. They donate money, buy land. They are not using it for anything. They just want to own the territory. They are not wise. We think about bread and wine. These, these are byproducts. You see somebody crying and doing VG. You think he has a body. When you check, he wants to marry. <laughs> Elohim Adonai What you don't know is that the Bible you are reading There are some men that they tie them to the stake like this And in their sight they burnt their families Just to reveal where they kept the last copy of the Bible they refused That's why the Bible got to you Only by the blood of Matthias does the kingdom move but in our day, there are no matters anymore. We have only men of appetite. And we think we can move the hand of God. God has very little for your appetite. Because what you call an appetite is nothing. It doesn't take God anything to meet all your needs in one day. But it will take warfare for you to take over a land. So spiritual resources are deployed in the direction of warfare. Not your appetite. If we continue like this, we will not only not be relevant but our children will bow before strange gods. Our great-grandchildren will bow before sorcerers and most of them will be maimed. The gospel of the kingdom must come back. Where men are willing to tell the great God and monarch of Zion, what will you have me do? The guy was a lawyer. He was the best in his day. But the moment he saw the throne of the Christ, he said, Lord, what will you have me do? The first thing he said is Lord. That means owner, master. He realized that himself and everything he has belonged to that throne. So instantly, he knew that there's no life except as he fulfills the will of that throne. Lord, what will you have me do? No wonder he was the greatest of all the apostles. Elohim Adonai. Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai Let me quickly give you two strategies of conquering kingdom. Meanwhile, these things I'm about to tell you, you can't do them unless you are broken. Because it doesn't run on the economy of appetites. It doesn't run on the economy of self. It runs on the economy of sacrifice. A man who is not broken cannot understand the language of sacrifice. Because sacrifice is a language in the spirit. 
for broken men. It's an economy that works within the ambience of the divine. Where a man comes to a point where he doesn't live for himself anymore. Even the life he lives is no longer him that lives but Christ. The first strategy of conquering kingdom is the strategy of priesthood. When we talk priesthood, we are not just talking prayer. I can't explain it now. I can't explain it. I'm sure Alpha have done justice to it already. So no need. <laughs> ah, I have done it. I've done a series of teaching on priesthood intelligence. It's a bogus, it's a bogus, it's a bogus subject. I can't explain it now. You know, people don't understand how large kingdom is. <laughs> the game of thrones. If we want to talk kingdom, it has to be a long series. Because first you have to make people understand that a kingdom is a dominion of a king over a people, creating a citizenry of those people where the will of that king becomes their lifestyle. If you have not traveled to a place where the will of God is your lifestyle, you don't know the kingdom. You can teach it, but you don't know it. That's why we've been emphasizing brokenness. And then when a man comes under the kingdom of God, then he needs to understand the entities in that kingdom. Because there are entities in this realm. There is the throne or the personality called the father. It is the father, it is from the father that purpose is born. What you call purpose is the responsibility of a father to determine the direction that you will go. It is the father that has the responsibility of telling you who you will be. Then you have to understand who the son and the office of the Christ is. It is the office of the Christ that is the administrative part in that, entity, in that, in that conclave of the divine. If you don't interact with the office of the Christ, you will not know how and the strategy of fulfilling the purpose you receive from the father. And then the Holy Spirit is the animator of the policy statements that come from the office of the Christ. So if you don't interact, if you don't know how to interact with these entities, you can't amount to anything. That was why when Peter knew that the revelation of the Christ, when he knew the revelation of the Christ, that was a purpose that was revealed from the Father. Jesus said it's the Father that revealed it. But Jesus had to instruct Peter to understand that this revelation is not just to know about Jesus. This revelation is a foundation the church will be built on. So the Christ is the one that brings administration to the purpose born from the Father. But even though Jesus explained it, they could not walk in it until the Holy Ghost came. Because the Holy Ghost is the animator of the purposes of God. So before we deal with kingdom, after we explain kingdom, we need to teach you how to interact with the entities in this realm. And then when you deal with the divine, then you come with, to the angelic. Because if you don't know how to maximize the angelic, you can't do business in, the ter in territories. Territorial businesses can only be effective when you know how to partner with angelic entities. So we need to also teach you the protocol of the angelic. And then we also need to teach you about the demonic. Because if you don't know about the demonic, you will, you will mess yourself up. You know, I hear a lot of people say, the devil is powerless. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will not open the Bible, but if the devil is powerless, is it God that makes people sick? Do you have an idea how many people are sick around you? <laughs> the devil. The devil. <laughs> you, have not, you have not been in missions Maybe you are just doing Bible study in a seminary Welcome When you come to mission uh, When you have field experience You will understand that that thing you are saying You don't have enough understanding By the time you go for a crusade in dry season And then they tell you that this crusade will not hold And you think it's stuck And then all of a sudden you want to set up your equipment And you see a dark cloud Coming from the east and the dark cloud comes and settles where you want to do your crusade. <laughs> then you understand the intelligence of thrones. That's why we don't do priesthood. We are only in seminaries and Bible schools. We are arguing in church. When the next time you want to argue, go to Angpa in Kogi State. <laughs> go and argue. <laughs> you see, after Paul taught them doctrine, he now said, finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hope you remember it was Paul that taught them in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. From verse 3 to 5. When he said, 
Hey, God of mercy. You need to study this Bible very well. And when you are studying the Bible, sometimes go and find out the order in which it was written. Because the reason we read it is because we just read. If you know the order in which it was written, you will understand that even Paul was growing in Revelation. The things Paul said in First Thessalonians, he can't repeat it in Ephesians. Because he wrote First Thessalonians as a young man. That was his first book. But when he came to Ephesians, he began to talk as a man whose finger had engaged battle. In Corinthians, he will tell you casting down imagination and every high standing thing, every high standing thing that opposes itself above the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity all things to the obedience of Christ. And then you read only that scripture and you bounce to the shrine and you are casting down every. When you finish casting down, then you will call, you will do SOS. We will come and carry you. <laughs> he went to Philippians. <laughs> See, when Paul began to mature in Revelation, his utterance began to change. That was when Paul began to teach us that the name of Jesus is not only mentioned. He began to show us that the name of Jesus is a mantle. He began to teach us again that the name of Jesus is a government. So he said, before you war, the same name of Jesus used to cast a, a, a demon. He said, when you approach a principality, make sure you are wearing the whole armor of God. Because if the name of Jesus doesn't become an armor, you cannot stand there. So he said, having done all to stand, stand there for. So you don't only go to mention the name of Jesus. There is something you must do to stand. It's called putting on the whole armor of God. You know, when you deal with demons, you're only talking about possession. Because the demon has no habitat. So he needs a man to possess. And then to impose his nature on that man. So if you see an unclean spirit in a man, he is dead, walking like a mad person. He's imposing his spirit. But that same man that is possessed by an unclean spirit, if a principality puts his finger there, that's why you can cast out demon from one madman he will be healed you will stay with another one for six months nothing will happen because the one that the principality puts his hand on he is using the moon to regulate him that one is not mad he's a lunatic so for you to deal with that case you need to have authority over the moon and a sorcerer will be backing it up so Paul came and said put on the whole armor of God because you don't only mention the name of Jesus you also wear the name of Jesus and for you to be able to wear the name of Jesus, you must have studied the scripture and stayed there until you see that light from the scripture. Because that's when we are changed. We all with unveiled faces, beholding as a glass, the image of the Lord, we are changed. So a man who has not done business with the word of God and entered into revelation can't do warfare in the heavenlies. That was where Paul began to show us that it's not only demons that are in this game. He said some of them are principalities and powers. A principality does not have business with your body. He is only interested in a territory. So when a principality comes, if a demon comes here now, he wants to deal with a prophet. All the demon needs to do is to possess that prophet. If the prophet opens the gate, and then that prophet becomes immoral. If that prophet becomes immoral, his eyes in the spirit is choked. So his interpretation becomes wrong. And over time, he manipulates that prophet until the prophet will drift from his calling. If a principality comes, he's not doing business with one prophet. He's looking for all the prophets in this territory. Because he needs to create a quorum. Because those prophets have authority over the land. If he creates a quorum with the prophets, then he can now regulate the destiny of people in this land. Because the authority of the prophetic in that land is like the torch in that territory. If he takes over the prophetic in that territory, he can manipulate the destinies of people. Because he is interested in territory, not a man. So if you are dealing with a demon who is dealing with the prophetic, it's different from when you are dealing with a principality who is dealing with prophetic ministry. That was why Jesus came and said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you to sift you like wheat. He said, but I pray for you that your faith fail not. When thou art recovered, strengthen thy brethren. When the devil came, he didn't come for Simon alone. He came for the whole brethren because he's looking for a territory. When Paul began to have this understanding, he knew that this thing is not casting out demon business alone. This one you will fight. So when we talk kingdom, after we explain kingdom, we teach you how to interact with the entities in the realm. 
you need to know the protocol of dealing with the Father, the Son and the Spirit. And then you need to know the protocol of dealing with the angelic. You need to know the protocol of dealing with the demonic. And then you also need to know the protocol of dealing with men. Because some men are systems. If you fight them, you will not prosper. And you can argue arrogantly. And you will marginalize your destiny. They will tell you that, ah, all of us are seated in heavenly places. You don't understand kingdom. When you understand kingdom, you will know that some men are systems. If you fight them, you have, you have shut the door against yourself. The reason harm was caused was because he looked upon his father's nakedness and he made a mockery of him. There are men you don't fight. Benihim gave a testimony. He said, Can a Copeland spoke against him in Philadelphia? And then Fene Copeland took him. You know why? Benihim is a system that represents healing in this world now. If you fight him, the healing angels will withdraw from you. And you may argue it all your life. <laughs> Can a Copeland went to pray and he was not being healed until he asked God that why can't he be healed? This is a father of faith. Can a Copeland's father in the Lord is or a robot? Or a robot is one of the, the war laws of healing before he left this world. Meanwhile, can a cop uh, or a robot walked with Benihim for 20 years? When he became old and nobody was with him anymore, Benihim hired him as his cook so that he can keep him company. So something traveled from, Kenek, from Orarobos to Benihim. The moment Orarobos departed, Benihim entered that vacuum. This is Kenneth Copeland, one of the fathers of faith in this world now. He spoke against the man that is the system of healing and he became sick. He prayed he could not be healed. Every scripture he knew, he memorized it, he prophesied it, he quoted it, it was not working. He now asked God, why can't I be healed? God now said, you touch my servant Benihim. The man flew immediately, came and apologized to Benihim. And when he did, he was healed instantly. So, if you don't know kingdom, you will think we are all equal. <laughs> Joshua Selman said in the kingdom, he said, by the finished works of Christ, we are all equal. But our sacrifices make the difference. <laughs> so, if you don't know the courtesy, the courtesy of dealing with men in this kingdom, you can say something against a man and the heavens are shot over you. And then you say, what is happening? You will do 40 days of dry fast and nothing will happen. I told you the story of my friend yesterday who is going to procure a property. And then God told him to go and wait upon Apostle Arumi Osai. Oh God, you have met God. Why will you go and meet a man? Many people in scripture, God directed them to men. Because those men are systems. The guy was anxious. He wanted to take some steps. So he decided to pray. As he was praying, he now saw Apostle Arume, taller than three buildings. And he, he was like a cricket. He now understood that he needed to wait on the man. <laughs> Kingdom. We can't teach it in one day. We can't. Everything I've explained here is just about the entities of the kingdom. Entities. That one in itself is a series. It's a series. And then when you are done dealing with the entities, then you now talk about the laws that govern the spiritual. There's a law that regulates spiritual possibilities. And then there's a law that regulates the move of God in your life. There are two different laws. The law that governs the spirit realm is regulated by the Holy Spirit. The law that governs the move of God in your life is regulated by the office of the Christ. That one is another series. And then you talk about the systems of the kingdom. The system of the world. The system of faith. The system of prayer. It's another series. So we can't talk kingdom. Then you talk about kingdom tools. That's when you deal with the gifts of the spirit. It's another series. But tonight, in the next 10 minutes, before we begin to pray, let me show you two strategies of conquering kingdoms. I said the first one is what? Priesthood. Priesthood is not just praying for a need. Priesthood is spiritual legislation. When a man comes to a point where he stands in the gap, for a people in order to enforce the will of God then he has begun priesthood 
But you cannot come to a point where you pray the will of God if you are still selfish. So before you begin priesthood, God will first of all break you. So that the burden of another man can become your body. That was why Daniel will be in captivity with others. But he will go for 21 days praying and fasting and repenting on behalf of the people. That's priesthood. He has seen the captivity of the people. So he is besieging heaven on their account. Priesthood is a move of prayer in the life of a man. It's not praying for a need. It's a move of prayer. You come to a point where prayer becomes the economy that runs your life. Most times you will shut down for three days. You have no prayer point. You just sense the body. Because at this point you are now partnering with heaven. So what God wants to do becomes a body in your soul. And then you will go. Sometimes you will pray for seven days. You don't know what you are praying. But after seven days the body diffuses. And then you step out. And God may not tell you. But what you are doing is that you are creating spiritual investment that gives God legality to do certain things in certain territories and he will still remain just. I told you in the morning that Revelation 5 verse 8 tells us that the prayers of the saints, it ascend to heaven as others and they are stored up in golden vials. So God begins to store your prayer as data bank in heaven. So something wants to happen in Jatoka. You have never been to Jatoka. But because you have stored up enough incense in heaven, God can fetch from your prayer and intervene. So in Colossians chapter 4 verse 12, Paul said, Epaphras is one of you, a born servant of Christ, laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So the reason the believers are standing perfect in Colossus was not because the pastor was a good teacher. It's because somebody was carrying out priesthood in another territory. He's not known. But the portion that God gave to him was a city of Colossus. So every day he had body, not because he needed wine, not because he needed bread, but so long as Colossus still exists as a territory in this nation, in that nation, the guy will be sentenced to the altar. Because every possibility of God that walks there is because that guy is on his knees. If priesthood does not become a cardinal part of our life, when we talk about conquering kingdom, we are only we are only joking. At best, we are parrots. You know what parrots do now? They have the ability to recite something. So you heard a man that has button for nations talking. So you too, you came to say it. Because he's eloquent. And he's appealing to the soul. Hope you know when you talk about nations. Territories. People are... Eh, eh, that's what you are doing. You are only a candidate when you begin to pray. Before God began to work with me like this. There was a day, a period that the buttons were so much... I will just be praying and then most of my prayer sessions were crying. I really did not have a trance. As I just begin to pray, I begin to weep. I will weep until my head will ache. All my veins will come out. My nose will be blocked. And then when I shower, come back, the moment I want to talk to God, I begin to cry. It was in that period. One day it continued like that until one evening I was so tired. I wanted to sleep and then the body came again. As I wanted to pray, I just saw light came out of the wall. And the light entered into me. And I fell into a trance. And instantly, I saw a valley. And I saw some creatures like crocodiles. And they were having battings in their hands. And they were slaying people. So I wanted to take cover. Suddenly, a batting entered my hand. I didn't know where it came from. Suddenly, a wind carried me into the battlefield. And I found myself. I began to fight. I began to fight. And after a while, one of the elders came and tapped me and said, go there. The people that are escaping, take them to safety. And as I was carrying the people to safety, they were giving me money, giving me all kinds of things. And I knew, oh, I have a part in this work. That was when I knew that I was part of the revival that we call. And you see that when others are laboring to raise people, we, we are pulling them from darkness. Because my job description in the revival is to bring men to safety. And the sweet part of that job description is that Fortunes are given to me in the process. <laughs> so, we may be two revivalists. Your own may be to stay at the back side of the mountain. Be faithful there. What may I saw in heaven was that what? They were giving me their money. So when they give me money in time, don't be jealous. This thing is ordination. Tell somebody it's ordination. 
<laughs> but all of these dimensions will come to you when you make peace with your lifestyle. And it's so unfortunate that one of the areas the devil attacks in our lives the most is the area of prayer. So while we were talking in the morning, we saw that Jesus said men ought always to pray and not to faint. When you begin to pray and you pray for a long time, then certain spiritual dimensions and intelligences begin to bring themselves to you. The first thing that will happen to you is that you will begin to have angelic fraternities. That is when your eyes will open and you will understand that every territory there are angels allocated to those territories. As you pray for a long time, you will begin to travel in the spirit and God will begin to introduce you to those angels because a new form of fraternity will begin in the spirit. This is not something you can contemplate because you don't even know where they are. But as you continue in priesthood, you will understand that there are angels that watch over different territories. You see, the reason why we are so anointed but we can't shift the hand of God in the territory is because we are not fraternizing with those angels. Those angels have their marching order from heaven. They are only looking for their partners on earth so that they can enact the purposes of God. But there are no men that have traveled enough in priesthood to reach to the heights where those angels are standing. But the demonic partners on earth are working with the principalities. That is why it looks as if darkness is prevailing. Because the guys that engage in darkness, they are eternally sentenced to priesthood. The reason you see some of those everybody go to live in the forest is not because they say that that job description is in the forest. But the spirit places so much demand on them that they lose their life in the process. So there is enough human partnership with demonic entities. That is why it looks as if darkness is prevailing. If we must begin to see progress and victory in our territory, we must be given to priesthood enough until we partner with the angel that have the counsel of God from heaven. This is what happened in Joshua chapter 6 from verse 2. When the guy needed to take Jericho, he knew that it was time to separate himself from the camp. And then he was surveying the land. There's a time when you pray, a, a point comes when the Holy Ghost comes and removes your spirit. And he begins to carry you around the territory that you will conquer. You will not know all of these things. It will look like story to you until you begin priesthood. When I began to intercede and entered into quality prayer life, the first thing that happened to me was that I laid down like this in the afternoon and my, my spirit was removed from my body. I floated in the room for a long time until a beard came out. He had no head, hair on his head, but his beard was long and white. And then he came follow me. And then this being carried me around Makodi. I saw things in Makodi and I understood that what you call even a school is a market where spirits are shopping and doing business with souls. That was when, they, when I came back to my body, I was humbled for many days. I became careful. You know, you can come for a meeting and say, I, I bring Kwakwalaja down. You have not seen. I take over Kwakwalaja. Mm. They don't take over by shouting. You take over in the spirit, through your altar. When you engage priesthood, Daniel was there on his knees for 21 days until the angel came and said, I come to give you skill and to give you understanding. That was when the angel told him that everything you are seeing in Babylon have nothing to do with the king. There is a prince in the demonic called the prince of Persia. He's the one ruling Babylon. So when you see bribe, when you see loss for money, it is the character of that being that is manifesting. Because the idea behind kingdom is what? For the one that sits on the throne. To create a citizenry of people that reflects the will of that spirit as their lifestyle. So Babylon was a reflection of the nature of the prince of Persia. So if Daniel wants deliverance to come to Israel in Babylon, he must first of all travel into the heavenlies and displace the prince of Persia. And the only way he can do that is to fraternize with the angel that is in charge over Israel. That was why Michael was invoked from heaven to become a participator of the warfare. There is a prince in Guagualada here in darkness that makes things go the way they go. Your preaching will not have effect until your intercession have on, on installed that prince. Priesthood goes before preaching. Prayer goes before evangelism. But we don't have men that pray. We go to Bible school and we come to talk Bible. We are jokers. A man who doesn't know the way of the altar has no place in the territory. Because God will tell you 
there is an angel that stands over this territory. You don't know him. And if you don't know him, you can't do business in the territory. By mercy and by the covenant of the fathers that pass through here, and by the move of the anointing to a degree, you can have a window. But for you to talk about owning this territory, you must through priesthood find the angel that has the key over this territory. Go and meet the men that are shaking this world. They will tell you how many times they met spirits in the realm of God. Sometimes these men don't tell you these things. So you think, I thought this thing was about scriptures. I quoted, I had Bishop Uedeko on TV. I, could, I scored most of his messages. I, can stand, I could stand and teach 30 of it. I could teach for two weeks. It's now that I struggle with preaching. Because now, if I go to preach, I need to trust God for a message to download in my spirit. Before it was not like that. I can come here and preach every day for 28 days. I have messages stored in my brain. I could score Bishop Oedeko and quote every scripture he quoted. But the more I talked, the more I was dry. And then I understood that mm -mm, this man has seen something. That was when I went back to his story. And then I heard that one day he said he went to the mountain to pray. And he prayed there for three days, fasting and studying the book of Ezekiel. And he was beaten by rain. His clothes dried on his body. And when he was coming down, a being appeared to him and said, This day I have touched your tongue with the coal of fire. As you speak, you will see it. And now realize that, oh, the power is not in doctrinal exegesis. The power was the fact that his tongue was touched with the coal of fire. So I went back to the spirit and I began to dig into God. I began to dig. And what me I found was not scripture. What I found was life. So I can be gisting with you like this. At any point I want, I can jack the meeting up. I can talk to you now and say, God should break upon your soul and you will begin to cry. And you will begin to cry. I can release life. When I press in, I found my own portion. If you press in, you will find your own. You may press in and find word of knowledge. God wants to use you to confound doubt in the heart of people. And all of us, that is when we will find our peculiarities. And the different graces of God that is at work in us so that we can form a quorum that has a stature to move the hand of God. If we begin to mimic men, we will have no place in the territory. But the only way to enter through that gate is by priesthood. You have not prayed until the blueprint of a territory is given to you. You have no stake in that territory. You can go and shout and say we own this territory and have 30 days vigil and say we take Guapalata for Jesus. We take That you are shouting doesn't make anything move because there are laws that govern this realm. There's a demonic prince and a sorcerer somewhere that is manipulating the destinies of men. You have not partnered with the gatekeeper of this territory and then you think you can speak things will happen. You don't know how it works. And these things must become very real and emphatic. Because if we don't do it, the devil will manipulate us until we live here. And our children will suffer the more. You don't know why you come to some territories you want to pray and then heaviness, heaviness. You, oh Lord, I love you. Oh Lord, I love you. And you sleep. Oh Lord, I love you. You sleep. <laughs> A prayer warrior from, from Boko suddenly come to Lagos. And then after three weeks, he becomes a Lagosian. He doesn't know. <laughs> he thinks Lagos is about hustling. He doesn't know the influence of the God of commerce. Principalities. Princes in darkness. The challenge is not because the princes are strong. They have partners among men. But the angels that keep the gate of territory, there are no priests that will partner with them. You may be shocked that among us here, there are seven prophets that are supposed to partner with the angel that has the key over this territory but you will never find them one of them was taught in church that man if you are not a millionaire you, there is no prosperity so he is deploying all his energy to make money there is nothing wrong in making money but the territory will shrink because he has not discovered himself in the spirit the other one thinks it's about certificate. So he's, he's, he has done BSc, he has done masters he has done PhD he is doing postdoctoral degree now Meanwhile, that angel has been standing for the last 50 years. There is no priest on earth to partner with him. So even though he came, he's an, he's an archangel, but he's immobilized because there are no men to partner with him. Meanwhile, the demon that cannot rank him in the spirit is prevailing because every sorcerer in this territory is walking over time. When you are going to sleep, that's when they wake up. 
there are some beings that don't sleep from 12 to 6 a.m. And they stand and enchant from 12 to 6 a.m. And they have run that schedule for five years. And then you, you think you come for prayer meeting in two hours. And you say, oh, oh, oh. And then when we are praying, we have different posture now. So that they will snap us and put on Facebook. <laughs> don't know it's a business or spirit. The guy is praying. The next thing, he goes and hug a pole like this. Ah, ah, ah. He's checking whether the cameraman is coming. You see him praying. Like, oh, oh, oh. You think his body. Immediately you say in the name of Jesus, that body will disappear. <laughs> a man that has so much body that can't hold himself. Immediately you say in Jesus' name, the body has vanished. If you lose a lost one, a loved one, does that body vanish in five seconds? That means what you have is not a body, it's a show. You are a caricature. <laughs> Meanwhile, the sorcerer, every night, is standing. You know, sometimes when you don't see things, you will think this thing is a joke. You think it's about intelligence and oratory. It's the day you come out of your house and you see a woman standing and she invoked the moon and the moon come close and she's talking with the moon. That's when you will know the powers that rule this land. You think it's a joke. <laughs> a 10 year old witch can stand on the road and she understand abstract projection. She knows the intelligence of abstract projection. She can project her spirit and block the front tire and the car will tumble. Meanwhile, you are a believer for 10 years. And all you know how to do is capital data terms. Even you that is praying in tongues, you know nothing will happen. And you will not stop deceiving yourself. Priesthood. It brings about partnership with angelic entities that holds the key over territories. The reason we can't move a territory is because our priesthood is not sufficient. When your priesthood becomes strong, you will begin to have visitors from heaven. Elohim Adonah Elohim. The second thing that priesthood will do for you is that it will begin to give you prophetic sight. Prophetic sight. Prophetic intelligence will begin to come to you. That's when you will understand the mystery of the, of the watches of the night. You will know that there are certain prayers. See, if you say some things, people will not understand. You don't know why when you begin to press into God, every day around 12 midnight, something wakes you up. As if you have an alarm. Or around 3, something wakes you up. You don't understand that all the intercessors, time has been allocated to them. At your own time, the angel that keeps the watch comes to tap you. But you always break the chain. And we want to take eternity. Twelve intercessors numbered in one territory. And then your own allocation is three. And every three a.m. the angel comes and tap you. And you wake up. <sighs> and you sleep. But when a man understands this mystery, he knows that in the night he needs to conserve his energy because there is an assignment in the night. The watches of the night. There is what God puts in you that will make your voice resonate in heaven by twelve midnight. That's where your grace flows. Another person flows by three and the angels have done the mapping and when they come to tap you, you are sleeping. You don't have prophetic intelligence. When prophetic intelligence begins to down on you, you will know the things that are deeper than calling names and phone numbers. This is not a bit to fight the prophetic, but we are talking higher matters. That's why the elders of old, they knew what to say for a land to move. They knew what to say to utter. The Bible says so long as Samuel lived, the hand of God was perpetually against the Philistines. So what a garrison of an army could do, Samuel by prophetic intelligence could do it. This is why these men were great. They were great. They know priesthood. So prophets those days were not judged by the accuracy of their prophetic power. They were judged by their intercessory stamina. So when God came to number prophets according to their rank, he was calling them based on their prayer strength. He said, even if you call Moses, if you call Samuel, I will not answer this matter. 
So they were not only sharp in the eyes, they were strong in the spirit. Priesthood brings them to a point where they can legislate over territories. These things are consecration based. That's why I always say they are not doctrine. Your quota has been vacant for the past three years. The land will not move. And the principality knows. So he will trouble you every evening to waste all your energy so you don't wake up by 3 a.m. So when every other person is laboring, you are an echan in the camp. And the territory can never change. Because you don't know your place. You have not discerned currently. It's in heaven you will see great men. Oh, not to forget this thing happening on earth. You will go to heaven and God will tell you. Imagine, do you know how many general of Asia were in Colos? Then God will tell them that the reason everything happening in Colos was happening is because of Epaphras. Meanwhile, they didn't know him. It was Paul that was writing to them and introducing Epaphras. When God wakes you up by 12, that time, he is not trying to give you bread and wine. That time he wants to discuss territory with you. That's why at that time you don't have prayer points. When the angel wake you up, you discover you have no prayer point. You just know you need to pray. Elohim Adonai. When this thing begins to happen to you, then God begins to give you intelligence. That's where your prayer changes. Oh, you will discover that when you begin to pray, a point comes where you hit a crescendo in the spirit and the things you are saying, you know you don't have that level of intelligence. Suddenly you begin to invoke covenants. You begin to invoke prophecies. You begin to invoke the sacrifices of patriarchs. You will not know where you learned this thing from. But what is happening is that the angel you are working with at this time is giving you skill and understanding. He came to Daniel. The stature of your prayer in heaven is not strong. That's why sometimes the Bible said the prayers of the saints. He said the angel mingle with it others. The angels that walk with you, fraternity have begun in the heavenlies. They add some spices to your prayer so that intelligence can come. Your, the things you are uttering at that time is beyond your knowledge. It's beyond your knowing. God has put an oil on your tongue. Your mind is connected to a frequency. So you talk the heart of the Father. When you pray, then the waves begin to move in the spirit. Not because you were specially schooled. You are fraternizing. You are fraternizing. Your prayer at this time is the utterance of a company. You are not just talking as a man. You are now talking as a representative of a clan in the spirit. You don't know that they talk. Maybe you will fraternize until a point will come where you are praying here in Guagualata. But because of spiritual fraternity by priesthood, you will come into the clan of Apostle Arum You will come into the clan of Joshua Selma. You will come into the clan of Dr. Howard Mills. So when you are talking, sometimes you connect to the frequency of Selma. And as you are talking, it's as if it's Selma talking. You connect to the frequency of Arum As you are talking, you think it's Arum talking. You connect to another frequency. Suddenly in your room, you see gold dust. Gold dust begins to come on you. Then you know that, hey, this is not you. Now you are in a clan. You are in a clan. You are in a clan. It is God priesthood intelligence. We can pray. That's why darkness is having a few days. Men of prayer must rise. Men of prayer. Men of prayer. Men of prayer. I don't want to be alone. I want to be numbered among warriors. There's a clan in the spirit that God has selected. I know that my name is part of them. I want to stand with the might. He said, Behold, how beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in harmony. It's like the dew dropping from the heights of Mount Hermon. When you become one with the patriarchs, you may pray, and then God connects you to the intercession of Paelti. Paelti prophesied that Nigeria will take over Israel. That time you were praying, time was withdrawn. Suddenly you become a participator with the fathers that died 50 years ago because you have entered the clan. Hey! There's no time. You can travel in intercession, and then something will happen. Suddenly, God will connect you in the spirit with Babalola. Babalola prayed 40 years ago, but his prayer 
ascended to heaven and saw us. It is stored in golden fires. Your own prayer adds to his own. And in the spirit, you become part of his clan. And then everything he prayed for, you begin to get it. Because priesthood has activated. Come on, you want to pray? Pray now. I have. in the spirit. By prayer you can stand on the same ground with Papa Lola because where he stands in the spirit you will stand there. Can you pray now and tell God to stay hunger in your spirit so that the weight of your dimension can come alive. The
is about to hit this building. But I need to educate you so you know what you are entering into. Do you know why people are bilocating and teletransporting? What is happening to them is because they have found where Enoch stood in the spirit. So it's the reality of Enoch they are walking in. In the spirit, when those men speak, you can hear the voice of Enoch because time is withdrawn. They have become a clan. You can enter into the spirit. And today you will speak in the voice of what one need. Because you find where he is standing in the spirit. Jacob cursed Reuben. Moses entered where Jacob stood in the spirit. And he said let Reuben leave. He altered it. Because when you find where a man is standing in the spirit. You become equals. It doesn't matter his generation. It's a technology of priesthood. God is about to raise them. Some of you are Deborahs. You can speak and the stars from heaven will fight the powers of Islam. The same way Deborah conquered, conquered Caesar and the stars fought in their courses. There are women here that can walk in the rankings of Deborah. But the question is, will you find where Deborah stood in the spirit? This is why priesthood is important. You want to cry and tell the Lord, stare, stare, stare me, stare me. Let the powers of our ordination, let the power of our ordination speak. Our soul, hey, so men are about to be set on fire. So men are about to be set on fire. I, 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 impartation is about to begin. Those of you who by ordination are territorial intercessors, the hand of God is about to come on you. As my brother begins to chant, the angels will be activated. I'm doing this so you know it's not about the man of God. This is ordination based. Every intercessor that is here that the hand of God, 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 begin to move. The hand of God, every intercessor, I ask that you fraternize that, that your angels touch you.
make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend and also make sure that you like the video so that youtube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message if you have any question please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you and also if you are watching this video and you don't know jesus christ ask the lord and personal savior i want you to make that decision just contact us in the description call us and let us lead you to receive jesus christ as your lord and personal savior and lastly make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded you can be notified thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section bye